What if you could create your very own productivity tracker right in Excel, complete with project tasks, a dashboard, scheduling, employees, and a whole lot more. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and today we're gonna do just that, and we're gonna do it all from scratch. Every function, every feature, every formula and format, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's gonna be an incredible training. We're gonna show you the best productivity tracker ever built in Excel. You won't wanna miss it, so let's get started. Thanks so much for joining us. I've got a really fantastic training. I am super excited to bring you this productivity tracker because it is complete with a dashboard. We've got project tasks. We're gonna be able to add, update, delete, save project tasks. We're gonna be able to create and schedule multiple recurring tasks with this. We're also gonna have a scheduling feature, which we're gonna show you. Very, very cool, employees and a lot more. And best of all, I'm gonna do this design entirely from scratch right in front of you. We're gonna start with a blank sheet and I'm gonna recreate this right in front of your eyes so you won't wanna miss a minute of it. It's gonna be a fantastic training. You're gonna learn so much. You're gonna be able to create your own application at the end of this, we're gonna be going over every step. If you like these trainings, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below, right where it says download, and just go ahead and give your name, email, and then I'll get that sent right over to you. If you do like this channel and you wanna support us, there's some great ways to do that. Simply going down, clicking on subscribe that button. Don't forget the notification icon bell. That will ensure that you do get an alert each time I post these trainings, which is every Tuesday. And we also do shorts every Saturday now. So you don't want to miss those. Those are just 60 seconds at a time. And I've got a whole lot for you. In fact, there's some great ways. So many ways you can support us. One of the great ways that uh, our students are getting tons of value is on the Patreon platform. Each week, I create a brand new updated training based on your features that you request or based on any type of fixes that you want, or maybe you want me to focus on an area. So we're doing that. I create a brand new workbook and an also updated training video, and I post those on our Patreon platform. So a lot of students are getting a ton of value getting your requests. We also do PDF code books, so you can study all the code very easily in a downloadable PDF. That's a great feature. We also have downloadable video content if you want that for some of our members. We have a ton of features on our Patreon. So that's a great way to support it and get a ton of value and really expedite your learning ability on Patreon. So I'll include the link down below. That's Excel for Freelancers right on Patreon. All right, we're gonna get started on this. This is the sample. This is what we're gonna be creating. It's got a dashboard. We've got project tasks inside the task. We'll be able to filter. We'll be able to search by task ID, task name, project or customer. So we can do that or search by an employee if we want to. So we could just do that and we'll have an employee. So we've got a lot of ability to do so much in here to show you that. So I'm gonna show you that. We've also got new tasks. We're gonna be able to create re, uh, create and schedule tasks. So that means we could create a task every weekday or every day or every week or every month. We can set a starting on until and we've got a pop-up calendar we'll be showing you. All right, so each individual tasks has start date, start time, end date, end time. What we want to do is we want to have a metric, right? So a metric could be time, right? This particular task is, is going to be 30 minutes or 30 hours or 30 days, right? Or whatever we want. And we could set the allotted. How much time have we set up for that? And maybe we've created, maybe we've set it for 28 minutes, but we were able to do it in, in 28 minutes, but we set it for 30. What if we have a unit base? A unit base is a great way to do that because unit base, let's see if I can select one that's unit based here. Um, a unit base, I'll just go ahead and switch it here. We can have that. So if we want a unit type, maybe we want how many calls we can make in a certain amount of time or how many calls we can make in a day. So maybe in a day we've got 20 calls for this particular day starting at 9.15 to a.m. And how many calls do we actually make? So the metric can be time or it can be unit base. So that's kind of a nice feature that we're going to be getting into and I'll show you that and then we're going to be able to show you that on our dashboard so we're going to have time-based period tasks where we can see you know how far they had now if it's time if they've gone over the time that's a bad thing right we don't want to go over the time but if they but if it's a unit type and we've gone over that means they've produced more than they've estimated so that's kind of a good thing so over uh, on unit type is good 
on time is bad. We've got tasks by quantity, time-based tasks, unit-based tasks, and a whole lot, right? So we're doing a really lot tasks by type. So this is a really great feature. On the scheduling, when we take a look at the scheduling, we've got a list of employees, a schedule of what, how long it's going to take. If it's more than a day, it'll show that. We've got an employee picture here that we're going to be able to show you. We'll be able to navigate using previous and next dates so it'll, or the current day. So we'll be able to show you that. Also, we're going to have the list, just the list of employees. That's kind of a nice way to have a quick look at your employees. So we're going to be creating all this with this really cool menu. And we're going to start that right now. But I wanted to give you an overview of what we're doing before we start. Now, just some other information on some other sheets that we have. I've got an admin sheet here. This will keep this the way it is. An admin, basically, we have the list. You saw those pictures that we have inside the scheduling where you pictures of each individual employee well those pictures have to be stored in a folder and if you want, want the pictures and the, all the icons that also is available on our patreon platform scheduling we've got the months the days what is our start day on scheduling in case we need that or start time that's going to be helpful what are the intervals right if we want to have the intervals we can change the intervals notice that they're going from 8 30 on 30 minute but we could change that to maybe we want a one hour interval so we could do that and then that's going to update uh, if we click previous and next it's going to automatic i probably should add a refresher button on here so that could be helpful so we can really update so you see how it automatically changes and it's really really helpful having that automated interval to be able to change super nice feature so i'm going to show you how to create that of course we have date ranges date ranges are going to come in handy on our dashboard because we may want to see date ranges for last year or last month i don't have too much data for last month but it's a great way to to show that right or this month so we can have different date ranges and we can change the dashboard based on those very very helpful feature also we have recurring frequency you saw that briefly we can schedule recurring the time in units right we can we can track based on minutes hours days weeks or month very helpful we have dynamic task types so whatever task type you want to put in here i've got color the status colors based on the status of the task so if we take a look inside the main and we look in the schedule we see that there's different colors so we can we can dynamically change those colors based on whatever we set here and we've got a pop-up color picker to show that so if i change the pending to a light green or let's choose a different color because that's already in progress so if i change it to a light orange and then we refresh this because i really should probably put a refresh button on here but we can also the, the pop-up calendar works quite nicely too i've got that here a pop-up calendar we can set the day so that's also so you see that it did change to that orange color so it's kind of a nice feature really easily and we have the search by remember we want to be able to search by if we want to find a specific tasks that's a task data this is all where our data is stored up inside uh, the project tasks the search by we may want to search by different fields so we can search by task name right if we want to do just we oops if we want to do search by whoops let's get rid of that site here we can search by site and then we could just that's only going to show us task names by site so a multiple search feature that we're going to be showing you or task type we can only show a certain amount of task type we want and a lot of great features i should also put a clear filter on that and there's a lot of work that goes into this i create these in about two and a half days so if you see some features that's where patreon comes in because i'll be adding brand new features like a clear filter and lots of things like that and it's just a few bucks a month so that really helps us out okay so we kind of get an idea of how these are going to play the time intervals we saw how those were important here so we need to know a list of those times and it's listed here and then the years are going to be used we can use that for our schedule purposes okay very very good so let's get to this I'm not going to use a blank worker because that would be you know four or five hours so i've got an admin screen here now the only thing that we need to design is the main screen so that's what we're going to start with okay so what we're going to be doing is i want to make sure that columns a and b if you seen my trainings before you understand that a and b are set to admin purposes and we'll be hiding those so i'm going to give those a distinct color i'm going to drop this down right we don't want we want to see that we're going to be using it and i'm going to give it just a gray color light gray color something a little bit different here and so we'll be creating some admin uh, functions here but not too many here this is where we're going to have our header up here and then our bar is going to go down here so what do we want to do so i'm going to use the shapes this time so i'm going to insert a shape here and just a square shape and we're going to use this for our title so i'm going to stretch this across here whoops so i'm going to insert this shape here and then i'm going to stretch it across here and give it a distinct color i want to fade so usually probably about just the same height as the row and we'll go to 
how, we'll just go the length of the screen because it's going to stay about the length of the screen. Not much more than that, which is fine for, for our purposes. If we hide those columns, right, we want to have it a full length. So we'll bring it probably to the end of R and that should be sufficient. We're putting a title in there, of course. And what is that title? That's going to be called Productivity Tracker. So Productivity Tracker. I'll make sure I spell it names. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at a misspelling for a while. I'm going to center that. We're going to give it a very distinct font, probably about 30. And uh, I'm going to put that in the middle here. And I want to give it a unique font, probably area bold and then uh, empty I like this I'd like to put a little shadow on it so it pops out a little bit so I'm going to go into shape format and I'm going to go into the text effects and put a bit of a shadow on that so it gives a nice look okay but I do want to give it the background now I've got some background that's going to be very consistent with our theme so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use control one and what that's going to do is launch the fill and I'm going to use a gradient fill on that actually it kind of remembered it from my sample so that was kind of helpful. So basically I used two colors, this one here for my gradient, that's exactly. So we're gonna use this color here, which is down here, it's off on the lower. And I'm gonna use this color right here. So these are to be the two colors that we're gonna be using consistently. So it just kind of remembered it. And so we've got it, oh, one more thing I wanna show you on that. When I select it, I want it linear, right? And I want it from left to right, from light to dark. So when we look at this sample here, oops, let's slide that over here. I'm gonna bring it over here a little bit just so we can see it. I want it linear, as I mentioned, and I want it from, so I'm gonna choose the, the light to dark. That's what I want, it's a little bit off the screen there. Okay, we can slide that back over. All right, so we've got that. Now I'm pretty much going to create a similar shape here, but that's gonna be for our vertical menu. So I'm gonna insert one more shape, just another square shape here. I'm gonna bring it down here. Okay, so this particular one, again, I'm going to meet it up there and I'm on, on I'm gonna hold down the control and select both shapes and I don't need any outline on those. So no outline on both of those shapes. And on this one, I'm also gonna do a gradient fill, but this one is going to be vertical. So I'm going to, let's slide that over again one more time so we can see it, or I can float this here, that'll be fine too. So I'll float it over here. And then what we wanna see is we want to be able to see that's linear and we also want to use from the light to dark so that it blends in there okay so i like that so you get an idea of that and then we want to make sure that we're, we're lining those up so i'm going to make sure that they're lined up on the left and this is going to be the foundation for our menu here okay very good so when we move it up we want to make sure that it extends all the way within the viewable area so we'll just go down a little bit and as it does okay so it blends in here nicely and that's exactly what i want i'm going to give it some cell colors just the background color of all the cells and we're going to go way way over because we're going to use a lot of columns and i'm going to just use here uh starting on this column i think we'll go all the way up let's go DQ is fine, stands for Dairy Queen, one of my favorite ice creams. And then we'll just go all the way up here. Okay, so I like that, and I'm just gonna give it the second grade gray color right in here. That's gonna give it that gray background consistent. We'll just use that throughout. Okay, very good, so we're good to go. Don't forget to save our work, Randy. We're gonna save our work as we go along. So what do I want here? I want here a menu on the left menu. So this is where our menu is going to be, as you saw in the sample. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert some more shapes here. I'll drop this down here. Here. and then what I'm gonna do is again just a square shape here but I'm gonna put some text in here so this is where our dashboard is going to be right about on the top of here and we want to make sure that there's enough for the icon and for the name so I'm gonna call this dashboard I'm just gonna use cap capital letters okay we'll go with the size of about 0.3 on the height and uh, we'll do 1.8 on the width Okay, I like that, that looks good. And I'm just gonna bring this out until it meets that. So we wanna make sure we probably do wanna do 1.8 also on that. Okay, that's good, so we've got a basic, but I wanna make sure that we've given enough space once we create one button, and I wanna make sure. So we're gonna create one button, we're gonna move it over here. So I'm gonna set the left margin. We need no fill on that one, and we need no outline on that. We'll increase the font size, probably to about 16 on that one, make it larger so it's, and I want to indent or use the left margin. We will put it in the left margin here, but I want to indent it. So how do we do that? I'm just use control one, I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to go into the text options here and right in here, side text box. I'm just going to, the left margin, we're going to make it about point, let's see, 
four or five. That'll be enough. I want to leave space and zero, zero, and zero. Okay, so we want to have room for that icon. Okay, I like that. That's a dashboard, right? For so what now we're that we're ready. We like it. I'll add a little bit of a shadow on that so it pops just like it does into the uh, text options here. We're gonna go into the hair and the shadow here, and we'll create a shadow here on this one. And then just a little bit less slight shadow on this. Okay, I like that. That's looking very good. I think on our sample, we use small letters, but I think I like the big letters better. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate that using Control D and bring it down here, giving it enough space. And then this is going to be for project tasks. So we're going to call that project tasks. I like the capital letters a bit better, project tasks. And I think we need a little bit more space on that, sufficient. And then um, I also want to add in more. So let's go ahead and increase this, this holding down the control. We want to do all of them. Right now we have a width of about 1.4. I'm going make it 1.5, I think, here. Width of about 1.5 here, 1.7 okay i like that here now that we're going to go inside here let's just go two on that what i want to do is duplicate now we've got everything ready to go i'm going to duplicate this and this just using Control d we've got two other menu items already ready so just moving them over here lining everything up on the left to make sure that they all line up line on the left and including our our background so everything's aligned okay very good so i like the way that that looks now we're ready to add some icons and we'll just update that so we've got project tasks and we also are going to have scheduling so let's put scheduling we can put scheduling or schedule i think schedule makes a little more sense and then continue on whoops continuing on with the last thing is employees okay great now i've saved some icons up so all we need to do is just click insert pictures this device and i've got some employee that'll help the pictures will help so these are the icons i'm going to use and for now i'm just going to use the dashboard here i'm going to use the employees here and i'm going to use the schedule here and the tasks here so those are the all the ones i want and i'm going to insert those okay now i want to set a size on that and i think 0.3 is sufficient so we'll just set them all to 0.3 so I'll just do in here 0.3 okay so everything's uh, size the same now just we just simply have to drag and drop and place them wherever we want to okay we also want to give these a name very specific name so that when we click on them it's going to be used properly okay that looks good let's uh, align everything up so i'm just going to hold down the control here and then control and i'm going to make sure they're centered here and then i'm going to group them i want them grouped together in a moment actually i'm going to line them up a little bit better just to make sure that everything's lining up because they both need to be lined up both vertically and horizontally so right now we're just doing the uh vertical and then we'll do the horizontal i'm going to unselect and make sure that everything's selected Properly. okay so now what i want to do is a whole, the vertical how do we do that i'm going to use the selection tool here and then make sure that actually horizontally here and make sure that they're all exactly centered okay i like the way that that looks let's take a quick look looking very nice okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to group them so i'm going to just each one each individually we're going to group them together and that keeps things nice and, and tight and that way we can then space them accordingly because we want it all spaced so each one is going to get an individual group once we've grouped them, I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to place them vertically. I have that here automatically. Okay, so they're all spaced out very, very nicely. Now what we want to do is assign names to them. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to call this menu one, menu two, menu three, and menu four. Icon one, two, three, and four, giving those very specific names. Okay, so let's do that. The dashboard is going to be our menu one and the menu one, and its icon is going to be called icon one. Now we're you Keep in mind that both of those start with four characters and then and then we have the number so menu two and then icon two so i'll just continue this and then we'll fast forward the video so you don't need to see all this okay now that each one has been named we have a group names don't necessarily matter but icon one and then we have our rectangle menu one menu one here okay perfect so everything's been named accordingly and now we're what we're doing is we're ready to basically create the rest of our schedule so what we're going to be doing is now that we have that i also want if you notice that in the, there was a, a triangle we needed on that and the triangle is going to let us know exactly which one we're on so how do we do that 
So what do I mean by that? Let's just, I'm just going to drag over the sample here. I'm just going to bring over the sample. As you saw here in the sample, we have here this little triangle. So that's exactly what we're going to be creating. As we select down, we want that triangle to move. So that's exactly what we want to be creating. Okay, I'll move it back over now. And so how do we do that? All it is is just a triangle that's filled. So I'm going to insert a shape, right? So what kind of shape? A triangle. And we're just going to place it so what i want to do is i want to turn it around here just so it's okay like this here making it exactly vertical we don't need any outline on that and i want the shape fill to be the same uh second here so notice it matches the background and that's exactly what i want okay it's a little bit too high so there we go okay so we want to give this a very specific name on that so that we can move it accordingly we're going to call that menu marker menu marker so i'm going to call that Give it a name called menu marker okay very good so that way we know this menu marker must move as we select whichever menu so if we if we're on dashboard and we're going to also want it to be centered okay very good so i like that that looks good so that's exactly what we want there as we move down when we select an item i want to know what menu was selected and i'm going to keep that in in b2 so right here inside a i'm going to write in the selected menu item i want to know our menu item numbers that's fine and so for example if it's one it'll be dashboard next up i want to know the selected task row. i'm just going to fill these in right now so while we're at it select task row and i'll get to exactly what that is the task id when we have an individual task what task is selected now i want to know what row is that task on so task row and also i want to know the next task id and I want to know uh, recurring fields. I want to know once the user adds a recurring field, we saw in our sample, we need certain required fields. So I'm going to put that in here. And then last, I want to know if we're changing the date range, date range change. Okay, and I'll get to exactly that. So we're just going to color. So these are going to be the only ones for admin. So I'm just going to highlight those here. And then we're just going to give it a color, unique color, and then just use here. Okay, some borders around it. That's fine, the border. And then I'll just left justify that here. Double click on that. So we got that. Okay, so the first thing what we want to do is we want to design our dashboard. Our dashboard is going to be a first set of columns. So we're going to pick a set of columns for our dashboard. Then the next set of columns are going to be for our project tasks, then schedule, and so on and so forth. So let's do the dashboard. Dashboard is very simple as far as now because it's just a bunch of shapes. So the first thing inside in G3, and this is going to be our date range field. So date range here, that's the label that we want. And here's going to be our date range. So what is that date range? That is going to come from directly the admin. So I've created a named range called date range here. We take a look and see date range. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to go back in demand. I'm going to place, use the data and then data validations where we're going to be creating that. So I'm going to slide that over here. It's going to be a list type and we want to equal and paste in the date range. So when you select on that, then we know it's the date range that that's exactly what I want. Also the next up in call my and J, I want the from date. What is the from date? And then also want the to date. And then something that we'll probably use at some point, although in this training, I'm not sure is the employee although I don't think we're going to be using it, but I'm going to put a spacer there because I want to be able to select like specific data for a single employee or all employees. So we're going to have that here. So I'm going to hold down the control L and then J all on row three. And I'm going to give it the white color because I want them formatted. I'm going to hold down the control once again here. And I'm going to format these fields accordingly. I want them right justified if they're not. I want to format those cells, giving it the border here, a very distinct border for those. We're going to use a consistent color for our border. And it's going to be this color right here all throughout the application. I'm going to go outline and then the dotted line is going to be on the right side. And for our fields where the user is going to be enter, I'm going to also hold down the control again, format those cells border this time i'm going to use the same color all the way on the top right and the bottom clicking okay okay so when they select on the date range i want the dates to automatically change here from to and the employee is going to be a drop down list while we're here i've got employees and i've got a, a two unique lists one with all the employee names and one with the with the text string all employees along with that now i've created a named range for that inside the formulas and the name manager and it's going to be called employees let's bring this over here sorted with all so that's what i call it. if i tab using the tab key down we see the dancing that's around that using an offset formula that is the one i want if i want to be sure i'm just going to control c 
copy that. So that's the, that's the list that I want to use in the data validation. So it's going to be right here. I'm going to go into the data validation here, and I'm just going to assign that to a list here, list type, and then we're going to say equals, and then we're just simply going to paste in that list. So that's going to give us a list of employees. We're going to keep that on all employees. These two are going to be date fields, so I want to make sure they are formatted for that under short date. And we'll give it some sample data. So we'll do one, uh, let's do five one, the first of this month. We are in May, and to the last of this month, uh, which is today, 531. Okay, great. So now we have that. We've set it up for the last day of the month. And so we kind of get that. I'm going to left justify these here just to make sure we're consistent. The dashboard is not going to be much just yet. We're going to continue that. So the dashboard, we're going to put that right here. But that's going to be last. So that's going to go all the way through P. So what I want to do now is I want to start working on another section of that. So which section do we want to work on? I want to work on these tasks, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And that's going to start in column R. So that's a good way to do that. Let's go ahead and move that over. Inside column R is where we're going to be adding our first. I want this to be our search field. So we're going to put all of our... Now, this header is going to remain consistent. So as we hide these columns, it's going to be consistent. We're going to be doing that in just a moment. But I want to put in some more features. So inside, directly inside R3, we're just going to put our search. Remember, we saw that search by. That's what I want to go. So we're going to type in search by here and i'm just going to copy and paste again we can probably easy to paste that format even though we're not going to use this we got all the formats already set up so why not do that so i'm going to copy that here and then we're just going to go in right here and then i'm going to paste paste those formats and then we want to do it one more time with the search by and then paste those formats here oops let's continue. yeah there we go okay so this one is going to be search we want to know what field we're going to be searching by and this is going to be search by this is going to be a drop down list this is going to be a text field so what are we searching by we take a look inside the admins here we see that we have some search by here so i've created a named range inside the formulas name manager and it's called search by search by so it's just going to be an offset so you see that's all of the search by that we can search by so we're going to go back into the main and we're going to click on here. And then what we're going to be doing is inside the data and then data validation, we'll be adding a new one, list type equals search by, search by. Okay, very good. So now we've got the search by. And so now we can search by anything we want when we do that. So they can put it in. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm on a task list. That's going to stretch all the way from, let's say, column R to V. This is going to be our list of tasks. So I'm going to merge and center that, and I'm going to call this task list. I want to format that, formatting the cells. So let's format that. And then you can, of course, you can use control one here, also there. I'm going to give it that fill effects, and I want actually the font's going to be white. So we're going to use a white bold font. I'm going to fill it, some fill effects. I'm going to give it some unique colors that are according to our theme. This is going to be the top, and this is going to be the bottom here. So that's going to be our that's okay so that's our task list the name then inside here i want the, our task name i want to put that here then what i want to do is i want to put the project or customer inside there the project or customer we have enough for both and then the start date what is that start date also i want to know what employee and lastly, I want to know the status of that task. We're going to put that right in here. We can make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to merge and center this and then left justify that. And then also just update the formats on that with the correct border. We can also use this. We've already set a color, the line color, the one we're using, which is consistent. So we can just do all borders on that. Okay, so we've got our search. We've got our task list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to format this accordingly. So we could just give it a single uh, color of white here. And then our theme background color, which is this one right here. And then we can bold it. Okay, I like that. That looks good. We can also give it some borders, some unique borders. Since this is blue, I want unique borders so that we can see it. So we're not going to use our blue border. We're going to use a white border. And we're going to go all the way around on the outside and the inside and clicking. Okay. Okay, we want to center everything. So we're going to center it. That There we go. We've got our information here. Now what we want to do is we want to put in our our. our task names here but i want some conditional formatting i want three rules one for the alternating row and one for the selected row where's that selected row it's going to be right here in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this here because we don't need to see it right now 
I'm going to just right click and I'm going to hide it. That's exactly what we're going to be doing in VBA. Okay, so now that we have that, we can also just stretch this out here. So that's exactly what it's going to look like when it's hidden. And we're going to give it a title here. We want to know what the title is here. This is going to be called Project Tasks. And I'm going to stretch this project task out. It's going to use some fields probably all the way to, and we'll go all the way from Q to AE. That should be sufficient. And then I'm going to merge and center that. I'm going to give it a, a font color with our theme. I'm going to increase the font. And then what we'll do is we'll bold it and make sure it's centered. Okay, so I like that. We'll do something similar for dashboard. But it's looking good. So we've hidden that. All right, so what I want to do is continue with that conditional formatting. So all I need to do is just go into the conditional formatting, manage rules, because I want to see all the rules. There's none there yet. So create a brand new rule. It's going to be based on two conditions. So we're going to use and equals and. And then what do I want to do? I want to make sure that R and whatever row associated, starting at row six, does not equal empty. And then another is going to be based on the even row. So we're going to do mod row of equals zero, two equals zero, that's gonna be for even rows. And I wanna give it a very a distinct color. Those are the two conditions. So we're gonna do the format. I'm gonna give it a border here. The border is gonna be using our border color and I'm gonna color the left, the bottom, and the right border. Okay, we could probably use dotted lines. I don't need such a distinct border. Slight border should be sufficient. Okay, I like that. I wanna give it a fill, a fill effects, or a fill color, a recent color that we've used. I can use this. Or if I want to use this color, I can use this color here. That's sufficient, this one right here. Clicking OK. Now I'm going to copy this because we're going to be doing something very similar for the auto rows. Clicking OK and click. And of course, I need the applies to. So what is it going to be applied to? It's going to be apply all the way through V and then down to a large row. So we're just going to go uh, 999 sufficient. Okay, apply that to make sure it's correct. Perfect. New rule is going to be based on very similar. So we're going to paste that in, but it's going to be for odd row. So one and then in the parentheses. Format this, I'm going to go with this a white color, but the same border. So if we look in the borders, we're going to use our same theme color, dotted line on the left, bottom, and the right. Clicking OK and clicking OK. OK, apply that. OK, that looks good. I want one more rule, and it's going to be based on the selected row. So what is that selected row? It's going to be based on right here, the selected task row right here equals row. Okay, so what is the format? I'm going to give that something a distinct format. So I'm going to go into the fill, fill effects, and I want some distinct colors on that. So we'll use this color and then maybe a little bit darker color, or probably somewhere around here. Okay, I like that or something a little bit closer to our theme, maybe it's something. So if you want something similar, all you need to do is just go into more colors then make it a little bit darker like that. I like that. Okay, that's good. And then I want to make sure it's got a different font. So we're going to use bold and we're going to use white. Clicking OK and clicking OK. All right, so that's good. So how do we know it's working? All we need to do is just make sure I need to add the applies to on that. The selected task row is going to be seven. It's going to be applied, but I do need to update the notice that the conditional formatting, the applies to needs to be the same. It needs to go all the way through V. This is correct. So we're going to paste that in here and paste that in here and then apply to. Okay, that looks really good. Clicking OK. So we take a look. We've got our conditional formatting as this row changes. When we make a selection, it's going to show that. Perfect. I like that. Now we can continue on. So that's going to be all of our tasks are going to be displayed right here. And so what else do we want? I want to skip one column and then we're going to start out our tasks. So inside this is going to be our task name. I want to put a field for the task name and then I want to skip a column and inside AA we're going to put the project or customer. So project or customer is going to go here. I'm going to then skip. This is going to be the field. I'm going to skip one more and we're going to go inside AD and I want to put the employee. That's going to go here. And the employee is going to go right here. Okay, so what else do I want? I want to put, I want to skip a row here and I want to put the start date. Start date is going to go in here and I want to know the start time, start time. And then the next, next column, I want that status to go there. Okay, skipping down here, end date is going to go here. Skipping over, I want the end time. And then last, oh, there, I want the total time in hours, total time. And we're going to put it in hours. So that's going to be a calculated field. And then down here, I want the uh, completion metric. What is the metric? Or is it time or is it a unit? Completion metric. So we'll put in metric here. And that's going to go right here. Next up, I want to add the unit type. Is it like 
Unit type could be days, hours, or it could be something like phone calls or email sent or, or whatever you want. So, and then what is the task type? We're gonna put that right here. Next up, I want the total allotted. So total allotted, that's how many are we allowing them to have? It could be minutes, uh, hours, or it could be units of something, emails. And then I wanna know how many the actual, how many did the actual do, actual completed? So that's kind of important. And I also want to know the completion percentage, completion percentage. That percentage is going to be calculated. Next up, I want to add a, a space for an attachment. If they want to attach a file, so we can do that. So attachment, and we'll use that entire line for the attachment. Then I'm going to skip to, and then what I'm going to go is to recurring task. I want to give them the ability to create multiple tasks based on a recurring schedule. So recur task every, and then it's going to be a quantity field then there's going to be let's say we'll just put in one here just for them and then there's going to be let's just say week this will be a drop down list but i just want to up a spacer here so we know what we're doing weekdays and then we're going to start it on start on a specific date that date's going to go here until and then another date here okay very good so that's kind of the the idea of it so what i'm going to do now is for the fields i'm going to hold down the control and i want to format these fields now another way is you can create a style format here if you're doing a lot of these and so here the project customer here the start time the end time the unit type the actual completed right now not now not for the calculated ones so the total time and uh completion we're not going to format those because those are not user entered i only want to focus on the user entered fields so these are the user entered fields right here okay so now that we have that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make those white i'm going to right click and i want to format those cells here and i want to give it that distinct border that we do on the field so and that in this case for those user entered fields we are going to we can use the full outline and then on the left just change that left okay and also probably want to left justify that so we can uh, left justify it here inside the genify left indent with the indent is fine here and then click okay all right double check the left justify there all right so i like the way that that looks and then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing or similar for this so I'm in all of our label fields, we're going to do the same thing here, holding down the control as we select the fields. We also want to do a few things. I want to right justify that and I want to add the borders. So right justify here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add those borders, the same consistent border that we've been using throughout. It's going to be that blue here. Actually, it was this blue here, this blue here. I think I messed up the borders. Outline here and then the right is going to be the dotted line. Okay, very good. Or just double check i'm going to select them all just go in and i want to make sure that we're formatting all of them so we're going to add the borders in giving into that consistent color even for the uh ones that were i want that consistent color all the way around and then the dotted line in the middle perfect okay so there we got calculated and completion these are going to be two calculated we've got everything ready to go now it's time to add in our button so we're going to click on insert here and then i'm going to use a shape just a square shape and we're going to put our button sets right up here when we need buttons for new task we need buttons for save and we need delete and then also we need the browse folder so let's give it the fill consistent with our theme here we're going to use this color here and then we do not need any outline of that so we can just select here or no outline is sufficient here this one's going to be called new task new task i'm going to right justify that and make sure that it is in the center here and then right justify that okay so leaving room from an icon we also need a button for save or update so i'm going to use Control d i'm going to duplicate that moving it over here and i'm going to move it over a little bit this one's going to be called save backslash update and then one more which is for deleting the task so i'm going to duplicate that using Control d delete task Okay, so now that we've got these main buttons up here, I also want to add the ability to create and schedule other tasks. So that one's going to go down here, and we're going to call that create and schedule. Create and schedule. Okay, let me move that over so you can see that. And all right, great. So we're also going to put an icon for that. I also need one more button for the attachment. This one is actually going to be merge and center all the way across. So let's do that. Merge and center, left justify that. And then update the borders here this border got messed up here okay now we're just about ready to add our icons i want to add one more button that's going to be for the browse so i'm going to duplicate this browsing for that attachment folder and that's going to be attachments okay so now that we have that i'm going to make this one smaller and there's going to be no text in that button so we're going to give this one a size of 0.2 
and then a width of also 0.2. And I'm going to place that square button right on the right side here of that attachment so that we can automatically add that in. Let's update this border here, format those cells, and just go into the border and make sure that blue border is all the way around the top, right and bottom. Okay, now once we have that ready to add our icons, we always want to create our buttons before our icons, and that's because everything that we add after ends up on top, right? So when we add those icons, we want those icons on top, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to insert the pictures, and we're going to go to this device, and I'm going to add in the add new. I want the folder icon. I want the delete. I want the reoccurring, the save and update, and that's going to be it. So I'm going to insert those. And then I want to size them accordingly. So we're going to go to 0.2 on that. And that's everything. It's fine except for everything but the folder. And we just need to move them around. So we're going to move the delete here. The refresh, that's actually going to go for our uh, create and schedule our reoccurring. The new is going to go directly here. I'm on the folder here. That's going to be resized. And the save and update is going to go here. Okay. So let's take on care of that uh, these items here. So we want to make sure that they're uh, positioned vertically properly. And I want to do the same thing for each. Once we they are, well, we can just group them together. And I'm going to do the same thing for each one of those vertically and then group them here, making sure that they're all spaced accordingly. Okay, very good. I like that. Now we've got our button sets here. Everything's sized accordingly. So what I want to do is I want to select on the individual groups of the buttons and I want to space them, making sure that they're all, all vertically and horizontally spaced here properly like that. Okay, good. And then I'm also going to group them together like that to make sure. For the create and send, I'm going to do the same thing. Again, vertically group them together. This one, we're going to change the size of this and we're going to change it to about 0.15 for that folder icon. And I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to select both of them and make sure they're centered together. And then I'm going to group these together too using undo that selection tool. Okay, I like that. Now what we want to do is we want to group them all together. And that's important because when we select on another menu item, we want to make sure to hide this group. So I'm going to group them all together just like that. And I'm going to give it a very distinct name. We're going to call that task group, task task group. Okay, also make sure that we move but don't size. So how do we do that? Control one will bring up the uh, this one. I want to add in this, making sure that inside the properties here, we move but don't, don't size. And that's very important because we want to make sure that uh, when we change any of these uh, column widths or anything like that, we don't want to make sure that the group stays the same. Okay, so everything's looking good. We're ready to uh, add our, all of our information in here. I like the way that that's looking. Now, what we want to do is I want to make sure that we can bring that down just a little bit here. I want to make sure that we're able to hide everything accordingly and we can stretch this out. We're going to have this all the way to right around AF. Okay, so that's looking good. So what's it going to look like? Well, we got our main menu that's actually hidden or our dashboard. So let's unhide that and let's go ahead and add that in. Okay, so there's everything is looking good. So basically, when we select a menu item, we want the project task to go in. And the project task, that screen, basically the format is now done. We can continue on to the next one. And that's going to be the schedule. So let's continue down here. And I want to add in, create that schedule right here, the, at least the formats. It's relatively simple because it's just kind of a few formatting. So Let's move on over and see how we can do that. Okay, moving on over, we're going to start it in AH3. So in this one, we're going to have our select day. So they can use select day, and then that day is going to be right here. We're going to put that all the way from, let's say it's going to be a merge and center. We need these columns small. So I'm going to merge and center this in the left. So this is going to be the day. And then below that's going to be our employees. So I'm going to put the employees down here, that employee list is going to go all the way down here. And I'm going to use some conditional formatting. In fact, I'm going to use the same conditional formatting that I did here. So I'm going to copy this one here. I'm going to scroll over here. I'm going to paste that conditional formatting. I'm going to paste it right here. Just paste it. Okay, so we do want to get rid of a few things. So I'm going to go into the conditional formatting and I'm going to manage rules. I'm just going to make a quick update. I think that I would like this, not quite white, but maybe just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go into the fill here. And I, this was our original color, so I'm going to go into more colors here. We want a little bit lighter here, so we can use a light. And then that's going to be a nice alternating color. Clicking OK here. Now, also inside the rule, we don't need any selected rule, so I can delete that. And what are the rules on this? Well, what's it going to apply to? Well, I need the applies to and the row. So it's going to be based on column AH. When there's an employee there, I want it colored. So we can edit that rule. Instead of R, it's going to be 
AH and starting in five, which is correct, AH5, and draw that like that too. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here, editing rule, and changing R to AH5. It's just a little bit quicker if we copy and paste. Okay, but we do need to update the applies to, so what's gonna be applies to? I'm gonna go all the way through, Collins BK. So we're going to start out in AH and go all the way to BK. So here, and we're going to go all the way to the last one right about here. Okay, and then of course all the way on down. So however many rows we want, we can just do 999. That's sufficient. 999 is enough. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in here. So it applies to. I'm going to click apply. Click OK. Okay, so basically now as we add employees, oops, let's slide back over there. As we add employees here, we want the conditional formula, and that's what I want. Now we're gonna have a header row here. So that header row, I wanna give it a very distinct color. This is where times are going to be. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna use a white font, and I'm going to use our, our theme color here. And I also wanna use some borders around here, but we need to use some white borders around there so that it stands out. So the border is gonna be white, and we're gonna use both outline and inside, and clicking OK. All right, I like that. So that's gonna be the, now the selected date here. We're going to add here that date's going to go here so we're going to give this this white here and we're going to use right justify that here it's going to have that date format here so i want to make sure it's going to be a short date format and short date okay so formatting that again using the borders here that we're using with consistent with our theme that we've uh, used here I'm going to give it an outline and then a dotted line on the inside perfect okay so that's good so if we were to select a specific date here 515 that's exactly what i want to show we need some buttons here to navigate for the current day previous day next day so we're going to insert that we're going to use the shapes on that and i'll use this arrow here it's going to be for our next day so i'm going to put that up here but i'm going to bring it up here so we have room for the next day i'm just going to call this next day Okay, I like that. I want to make sure that it is centered so we can use the centering here. Looks good. And it's got to be our theme color, which is this shape fill, fill here. And we don't need any outline on that. Okay, so once you have it just the way you like it here, like, like I do have this way, I want to duplicate that using Control D and I'm going to call this previous day. So previous day. Okay, but of course it's the wrong arrow, so I do need to flip that accordingly. So we're going to rotate that and we're going to flip it horizontally. And that's going to put that triangle the other day. Okay, so I got previous day and next day and now all we need is something for the current date. I'm just going to copy this shape here, copy this, which is on the left side and paste it in here. This we're going to be for today. We'll call this today. Today, since it's already formatted, I'm going to center it accordingly, make it smaller, and that's sufficient for that. So I'll just bring it down here and bring it over here. Okay, so we're going to then hold down the control and make sure that they're all spaced vertically and horizontally here. And then I'm going to group them together. We're going to call this our schedule group. These are going to be the only buttons that we're going to be using for the schedule. So we have a schedule group. So also we're making sure that, of course, back inside the properties here, we want to make sure we move but don't size it them. And then giving this a name called schedule group. Okay, very good. So this is going to be shown hidden as we display the schedule. So things are looking really good. We want to give it a very good name. So I'm going to copy this and just going to paste it right here. And we're going to need more, but that's kind of a way. So all I did, just I kind of was kind of off the screen. All I did was copy this one here, and then we're going to need it. So I'm going to call this here our task scheduler, task schedule or scheduler. Either way is fine. Task schedule. What did I call it on the menu? We'll probably repeat that. What did we call in the menu? Schedule. Okay, schedule is sufficient for us. But we need to make sure that it's merged and centered all the way across here to our last one. So we're just going to, whoops, cancel that. That's good. You can't do that. Continuing on, I'm going to merge and center right here across all the columns that we need to. Perfect. So that's looking really good. And of course, remember, this is going to be stretched automatically. So we don't need that header. It's going to be there in a in a minute okay so let's give it some information here so we have employees here and i want the times what's this going to be this is going to be our starting time where's that starting time located it's located right here what's it called it's called start time so why don't we just put that in so back into our main we're going to just call this equals start time there you go so now we got that we need to format it accordingly with the time right we need that that's important we'll take care of that all we but in fact i want to format them all what kind of format do i want so i'm going to go into more number formats and i want to give it a time format but i don't want to use too much space on that so something like 1 30 p.m but i don't want to use all of this right i just want to keep it really simple so i'm just going to go a slash p on that so and then we can get rid of this 
part two here. I don't need the English US. So just selecting here or somewhere around here. There we go. And get rid of this. So that's what I want. I just want it really small and really easy. So that's the format that I want. Now, what's the next time? Well, the next time is going to be dynamic. It could be 815, it could be 830, it could be 9. It's going to be based on this interval right here. This interval, right? So if we select 30 minutes, but we also have that in a decimal format called interval. Now, how do I get that? Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up here. And I'm going to look it in. Let's get rid of this. We don't need. To. I'm going to look it up in here. When it's found, I'm going to replace it with the decimal equivalent. So five minutes is a 0 .05. So these are the decimal using this. I've used this formula. One by 24. One meaning a full day. 24 hours in a day. And then divided by 12, it's going to give us there's five 12 minutes in a single hour, right? Five times 12 is 60. So we're going to use this math. That's going to get us the decimal times for this, right? If it's just one hour, it's one divided by 24. I want to add in the decimal form. This is simply text. So we're converting text, the user selects text, to whatever it is in here. So that's good. So we're using index. I'm indexing this and I'm determining the using a mask to find the right one. So I've given this a named range called interval. So if I change this to 30 minutes, it's going to show 30. So if I know that this is interval, all I need to do is just simply add equals. So in this one, equals whatever's in here plus the interval, plus interval. It's already been uh, as time. So there we go. So that's all we need to do. Okay, so we see how that goes to 830. Now all we need to do is just drag and drop right there and bring it all our time. So that's at 830 all the way through 930 p.m. Very, very cool and very easy that we can add that. So that's done. Saving our work. We're good to go on that. And we're going to add in dynamically the employees we'll put in here. So how do we add an employees? Well, in fact, easy ways. Let me just copy employee name here. And these are our employee names and I could just need to bring those in here and of course we can do that with VBA but starting here it's a great way to start okay so now we have our employees our conditional formatting is automatically updated I really like that and that's our unique and sorted employees okay great so we've got our schedule format done so that's looking pretty good next up is the employees so let's take a look in here I'm just going to copy this project tasks and I want one for dashboard too. So let's do that here. We want to put the dashboard in here. Just the same as formatted as, as we have. So let's do dashboard. And we want to make sure that it's formatted. So again, using that theme here and um, bolding it, centering it up here. And let's double check the size, right? The size here was 18. So I want to make sure that it's also 18 here. And then we'll merge and center it across that. So that's going to get that 18. And we're going to merge and center it across all the dashboard, which is going to go to about P. So merge and center. Okay, so now we've consistent dashboard here, project tasks here. And remember, it's VBA that's going to be hiding these columns. And lastly, we want the employees. So Let's go ahead and copy the dashboard because that uses a few columns. And I'm just going to paste that right in for our employees. And our employees are going to start right in here. Let's just see. I think they're going to start in right in CA. CA3 is where we want to put that. And 2 is going to be our header. So we're going to call this employees. Okay, very good. So now we're ready to add in our employees. Okay, so we can go to our employee data. This is our employee data. And I can just pretty much copy. I'm going to copy and paste this. And then we can have VBA to help us. But I'm going to copy. I'm just going to paste the values. That way we can get some really good conditional formatting in uh, real, relatively quickly. Once we have the values in, it'll show up. So inside main, I'm going to paste the values in here just like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and update this according to. So uh, let's put in the. We we're going to use a white here so it's consistent and the background is going to be that blue. We are going to then also use the borders. This time we're going to set the white border. So let's go to white. There's another way to do that. And once we have the white, oops, let's select that again. Once we have the white border selected, we want to then make sure we're going to select all the borders. Okay, so I like that. We're going to add some conditional formatting. Again, what do we want the conditional formatting to look like? We can do this one right here. Again, I like this color and I could just remove it and then make those updates. So I'm going to copy this again, paste that right in here. Just paste it right in here, paste everything. And then we're going to update that. Of course, that's going to go to one. That's the ID. Going to go to conditional formatting and manage those rules and update those. Where the selected, we won't be using that. So we can delete that. And I'm going to update this. this is going to be based on column CA. So we just need to change instead of R, it's going to be CA. And also, I want to do that for the next one here, and then we can just update that. So once we have conditional formatting, it's very easy to keep duplicating it throughout. We just need to copy and paste it. And then, of course, adjust the applies to. And we can select the range all the way down to a large row. 
and then we'll use 999 and then we just need to use that for both simply then applying it and then we've applied it so there we go very quickly we can create conditional formatting okay so i like that that looks pretty good it's relatively simple on the employees not a whole lot going on there all right very very good so we've got a lot so now what i'd like to do is i'd like to put this in action right so we've got our format set up we still need to fine tune a lot of things but let's get this menu working right so how are we going to do that well when i make a selection on here i want to do that to do that we're going to use vba so we've got some very distinct names on here so let's go into the vba editor and i'll go step by step so you don't have to worry let's take a look and see how we can make this menu and basically what i want to do is i want to hide certain columns and show certain columns and hide certain shapes and show certain shapes so let's do that inside the developer if you don't have the developer available we can go into the options here and we can just go into the advanced customized ribbon here whoops and then select the developer make sure that that's selected you have a shortcut it's called alt f11 alt f11 will get you into that vba so all you need to do is just click alt and it'll go right there okay very good as you can see i've got some code ready to help us along and this is our sample so i'm going to kind of keep that closed so we don't need that so we've got two workbooks one's our sample one's the one that we're working on i'm going to save our work before i forget and then continuing on we've got some main screen macros main screen macros and that's what we're going to uh, focus on here something called menu change menu change now inside this menu change it's what i want it's the macros that i want to assign to that so if i select here holding down the curl that means both the icon and the shape here here and here holding down the control this is where i want to assign it to so i'm going to right click here and then and or assign macro and i'm going to that's the macro i want to send so what is it it's going to be called that we can go down to menu change menu change and clicking okay and that means the same macro is now for everyone so what how does this macro work well we need to mention the menu number as long i need to know that what is the menu number it's going to be based on the application caller what is the application is the name of the shape that called it so the name of the shape could be called menu one or it could be called icon one right we know we don't know exactly if they're going to select on the icon or the menu we want to give them the choice to select either one so but i want to extract the number out of it i want to know one or i want to know two let's let's go inside here individually or i want to know two or whatever they've selected i want to extract the number so how can i do that well i can do that simply by removing the first four characters if i remove the first four characters even if there's 100 menu items what's left is going to be the number and that means whether they've selected an icon notice it's four characters then the number or menu four characters and the number so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to use the replace on that so we're replacing something what are we replacing we're replacing the first four characters we're going to use the left command to capture the first four characters of whatever shape called that macro if we try to run this macro from here it's going to create an error because nothing there's no shape that create that called the macro we called it from right here so that will always result in a result in a bug because application caller is being used so i'm going to take those first four characters and i'm going to replace them with nothing that's going to leave me with the menu number once i have that menu number i'm going to place it directly in b2 i want to know b2 here where you set up it's going to be that selected menu number okay so once i have it in b2 i want to then basically hide everything we've got shapes menu marker top remember the shape this menu marker here this shape right here is called menu marker i want to position this where am i going to position it based on where it's going to be the center of wherever they've selected so i want to move that vertically up and down so shapes i want to set this to the top application of the top now to do that i also want to make sure that this group the top of this group this group the height of this is 0.3 i want to make sure that this is also 0.3 i'm not sure if it is or not 0.3 0.29 so 0.3 so if both of them have the same top positions then i know so for example if i set the top position to this and i set both of those to the top or the same center oops not that the same top position but if i set this to the same top position as this then i know so just using the top position is going to move it up and down so that's all i really need to do so changing this to the top same top position is to whatever's been selected and that's all we need to do making sure that icon also should be 0.3 good it is the icons are 0.3 this the, this is 0.3 and this so that means is since they all have the same height all of them it's going to be perfect it'll be placed perfectly so one this all we need to do is going to place that menu marker place let's put a note in there place 
menu marker very very easily okay so next up what i want to do is anytime you have a, some kind of a menu we want to take the first thing and that's hide everything so all the way probably from from column f is what we're going to do the first column all the way to the last column what's the last column right around cl right i had it at ck but uh, f colon ck didn't look good on the vba that's what i had i had f colon ck i'm like that doesn't look good i better change it to cl so i changed it to zl but either way it could work so we want to hide everything so basically i want to hide all these columns i also want to hide all the group shapes that means this this shape here this particular shape called task group i want to hide that i want to hide the schedule group and i also want to hide the dashboard group but it doesn't exist yet so that could create a bug this doesn't exist so i'm going to comment this out because it doesn't exist yet when we create the dashboard we are going to create a group this one is also i want to make sure the dashboard here i'm going to comment this out because this group of shapes does not exist yet it will be a bug okay so we're going to hide all the columns and i'm going to hide all these shapes so these shapes then we're going to use select case based on the menu number if it's a one select the dashboard we are going to unhide columns f through p right if it's a dashboard i need to unhide f through p should be unhidden if it is number two tasks we are going to unhide q through af and we're going to show the task group if it's a schedule you get the point we're unhiding columns and we're showing the group and employees there's no group associated we're just unhiding it so that's all we have to do let's see what this looks like in action dashboard Okay, you just see so when i hide the dashboard you see everything's uh there project tasks okay that looks pretty good so we see we've hidden it so now let's move over here i want to make sure things line up and that means assuming that the the columns are hidden does everything line up it looks pretty good i like the project task probably uh, i would like it a little bit it looks like this is a little bit over here and i want to make sure that i think that looks pretty good okay so bringing it over here the size looks pretty good so when we now if we select this i want to make sure those columns are hidden schedule that looks pretty good except this didn't this didn't move why did that happen well because we need to set this accordingly so if i bring this out right here i want to make sure that this is not going to be moving or sizing with the cells so how do we do that we can use control one so i want to make sure that inside the properties we are going to we can do both move but notice how it was set to move move but don't size or don't move or size that works too but let's stick with that okay so that's fine for that we want to make sure so that when we go back where that title is never moving that's exactly what i want so now it works on employees okay very good i like the way that that's looking it's looking really nice so we have employees here we have our scheduler project tasks and so everything's looking really good we've got our menu set up let's go ahead but what about this how come that didn't look so good the reason is that is because you see this also changed this marker also changed so we want to make sure that everything is not changing accordingly that thickness okay so we also need to set that so we're just going to bring this out to its original right right about there and of course we want to make sure that we are sizing and not right so we also for that one so we want to make sure that move but don't size so because when we shrink that we want to make sure that everything all those shapes okay that looks pretty good i like that it's a little bit over on that we can increase that it's a little bit high all right i'm just perfected it now i got the right size i got the right height i got all that so it's looking really good and also may, just make sure make sure all your shapes are moved but don't size because that's easily that always gets me into trouble okay so let's continue on what is the next inside our project task this is what i'd like to focus on here i want to be able to add update and save tasks so how do we do that and of course load tasks so how can we do that well that's going to be with vba so basically what i want to do is i want to look in a search filter if there's any search i want to load those tasks up how does that happen that's gonna happen on change event so the first thing what i want to do is check to see what filter is possible and then load any of them up our tasks of course are located on this screen right here and we're going to have some criteria what is that criteria we're going to be searching by task name maybe we're going to be searching maybe by project or customer or maybe we're going to be searching by employee so we need this dynamic and that means we also need this dynamic so how can we make dynamic we can simply link it to whatever's in s3 in the main if it's linked here to whatever that means that header is going to be dynamic make 100 sure when you have this see notice these names here they must exactly match your header names here these header names here must match 
whatever's located in our drop down list and our drop down list comes directly from here so we want to make sure i just copied and pasted them right here to make sure that they did match okay so that's going to be our criteria if the user has if they haven't entered anything we're just going to enter a star but if they have entered something then we want to make sure that we put that in there automatically so how do we do that we do that with a formula if the main ue3 equals empty then just use star otherwise use main u3 u3 so basically whatever the user has now entered inside u3 we're going to put it there if it's left blank we're just going to put the asterisk okay so that's all we have to do so what do we want then i want those results running that advanced filter i want those results to come in here and i'm going to take all those results and I'm going to bring them directly inside here through VBA. So how are we going to do that? Well, that's going to be based on our task macro. So it's going to be a module called task macros. We can move this over. The first one, which is the one that's going to run. When do I want this task macro to run? I want it when anytime there's a change and probably should add a button here. So maybe we'll do that to refresh. I think that would look good, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate this. I'm going to use control D. So I want, because I want it part of it, and I'm going to get rid of this here, and I'm going to bring this all the way here, and I'm going to use this as our button here. So you see how I did that? Okay, so now I'm going to hold the control down on both of these, because I really could use a button there. And then if I can move those over, zooming in, because I can't grasp both of them, because it's part of a group. We can ungroup, but there's no need. So I'm just going to group. I want to keep it in the same group. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use it as our refresh. So I'm just going to drag it up here. I'm going to make sure that they're both centered here. And then I'm just going to bring it. So we're going to use this as our refresh. And I like that, the way it looks, because I want to refresh the list very easily. So I want to tie a macro to this, and then we'll size it accordingly. So I'll unselect it and just bring it down here. Okay, so that's kind of easy. You can see it's still part of the group. Remember, it's still part of this task group, which is really what I want here. And then I'm going to assign a macro. So I'm going to hold down the control. And what macro are we going to assign to this button? I'm going to use this one called task list. This is what I'm going to list task list tasks. Okay, so back into here, we're going to go and we're going to simply assign that right here assign the macro here so clicking assign macro and assigning that okay so now we have a refresh button which is kind of nice and uh, that way and what that's going to do is just going to refresh that based on whatever's in here so we can do that and click refresh too okay so inside this macro what do i want to happen whoops i opened the other workbook we don't need that okay so inside this tasks here first thing what i want to do is i want to clear any existing results now I want to clear a few things not only do i want to clear all the results i'm going to keep that id there's an id that i want where do i want to put that whoops let's go in here where do i want to put that id that task id you saw that that task id is going to come it's going to come in right here i want to bring it in i also want to bring it into our main but i want to hide it and i'm going to hide it in column q and i'll show you how we're going to hide it but it's going to go there and the reason i want it is because when the user selects whatever task is i want whatever task is located in q and i want to place it directly inside b4 and when they've selected something, we know that selected task row is going to be in B3. But I want to clear that out so that there's no selected item. So I want to clear that out, and I want to clear everything from Q6 all the way through V and down. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Q6 all the way through V and down and B3. Focusing on the tasks, now we're going to take our attention to the tasks. I need to run an advanced filter determining the last row of our task our tasks here and then we're going to use this as a criteria our criteria is going to be based on that those uh variables that we've entered the type and the name and then we want the results to appear here so that's an advanced filter going inside that we're going to determine the last row with this row if it's less than four that means we have no data our advanced filter is going to be based on the header rows on column three on row three starting on column a and going all the way through column r and the last row our criteria is going to be w2 through w3 and the results z2 through ae2 we're going to then once we run it we're going to determine the last results row that last results row is going to be based on column z if that's less than that should be less than three if that's less than three then we're going to go to skip uh four is fine skip sort skip it's less than three we have no data right so that's probably better so let's see if last results row is less than three then what we want to do is mm, exit the sub yeah we can exit the sub out of that so but i do want to sort the data i want to sort it by, by task id so to do that we are going to run a sort if there's only one row of data then we can skip the sort and go to right here 
we're going to sort clear any sort fields z3 is where we're going to that's our task id and i want to sort it ascending so our first task all the way to our last task we're going to set the range from z3 all the way through ae okay so we're going to apply that sort once we have all the results we're going to simply bring over those results q6 is going to which is inside remember q6 is going to take on that task id it's going to be hidden q6 i want to make sure that that is all the way through v and the last results row plus three why are we adding three our results come into row six but our results here start in row three so we need to compensate I'm going to bring it all the way bring on all the tasks over then i want to set the selected row i want to know what row should be selected let's say i have a task id of four here Right. and i want to make sure that how do we get that inside there i want to if there's if there's a four here that task id four i want to make sure that row seven this takes row seven so basically what i want to do is i want to look i want to i want to look if there's a task id here i want to look inside here if it's found what row is it found on if it's found place that row directly inside here so we know that selected row i also want to know the task row based on task id how do we know that we can use that with the formula equals but if there's an error we need to through show a blank so we're going to run a match and what I'm, I'm going to look up this task id and i'm going to be based on our lookup array what is it it's, we have a, a named range called task ids it's a dynamic named range i've already set that up if there's an error just show blank but i don't want i don't want the row number if we take a look inside here we see that task id 4 is based on row 7 because the first one starts on row 4 so we need to add 3 for that so to do that we just go here and add 3. okay so now that we have the correct row number i want to know the next task id equals if error we're going to wrap it in we're going to run a max this time a max based on that and if you've seen my videos before you've probably seen this a bunch of times because it's all so we're going to use the mask of all max of all the task ids plus one i want that next available task id if there's no data it could return an error so we're going to default it to one okay the recurring fields i want to know make sure that the user has entered when we create recurring i want to make sure the user has entered all four of these fields if there's one missing i want to let the user know so we should count all the fields that have text and that way we know so we can use that equals count a i'm going to count all the fields what fields are this holding on the control this one this one this one and this one if it's anything less than four we need to let the user know so if we create it so notice it's showing two right now so if i put i want to start it on let's say 510 and i want to continue all the way through 531 right now it's going to change to four and we know the user has entered all the correct fields the date range changes is going to be used for the dashboard it's going to be true or false so we'll just put a mark here's false i'll explain that very very soon we're going to click save okay great so we've got to work so let's go ahead and run this macro now we've already been through it so i'm going to run this macro and that's the macro we just tied to this button so it listed all the tasks accordingly and but you see that we have this but i want to hide it right so when i select on here i want whatever's in queue i want it to show up directly inside the selected task row but i really don't want to show these tasks so i want to hide them so i'm just going to go down here and we should probably just go the whole column so selecting on the whole column going although generally i don't like to format entire columns it takes a lot of memory so let's say i uh, let's just do q 500 go all the way down here and then just scrolling on up and then holding on the shift and then clicking here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to home and then we're going to go more number formats here and then we are going to go into custom and i'm going to change this to two semicolons and clicking ok and what that's going to do is going to hide them so now we they're still there if i select on it you can see if i double click you can see it if i select on it you can also see it in the formula bar here it's there but it's just hidden and that's exactly what i want okay so now that we have that we have we see our list is looking good and i want to load it up we have some more macros that we're going to run over we need ones for new task and save and we need a bunch of them okay so how are we going to do that in fact i should probably just bring down this gray but you get the point a little bit it's kind of a you can still see it shouldn't see any white okay so we're going to bring down this and bring it all the way down here that looks good okay all right so continuing on now what i'd like to do is i want to make sure that we can run through the macro so what's the first macro that we need to do let's let's do the first macro as load because that's gonna or we can put new task save update and delete loading when do we load it when i select here that's when i want it to load on it 
Okay, so that's what I want to happen. So let's continue on. So we just covered the task list. Now we're going to do task load. Task load. So when should that happen? When I make a selection change here, I want to load the associated task. Well, that's going to be a selection change event. I've commented out because it, otherwise it would be working. So let's take a look inside the main sheet and I'm going to uncomment this code out. So I'm going to do control A and then we're going to uncomment it out. Okay, so now it's going to work. So it's going to be a selection change event. And that selection change event, if there's user selects more than three cells, we're going to exit this exit that and the reason is that because i want to make sure for some other fields okay we need to make sure the calendar shows up if i make a selection we're going to go to that but let's just focus on task selection task selection we'll get over this in a little bit user makes a selection from r6 through v99 and i want to make sure that q that's where our task id and the target row value does not equal empty must on selection of task selection ensure task id is present Okay, so now that Q is not empty, right? That's where I task ID. Again, I want to put the target row inside B3. That target row, that selected row must go in B3. What next? The task ID, whatever's in Q, is going to go inside B4. So that's the next line of code. Right here, B4 is going to take on whatever's in Q in the task ID. Then we're going to run a macro called task load. So when I select on something, I want to load that task up. Okay, you can see it happen there. Just need to left justify a few fields here and then we're good to go so how did that happen okay well that happened in task load so let's close this out and look in task load first of all i want to make sure that b5 is not empty if it is empty let the user know b5 is critical because that's the task row that's associated with that so we need to make sure that that has a value as long as it if it doesn't we're going to let the user know to please select a correct task going to set the task row it's a long variable in b5 and we're going to run a loop we're going to use uh, data mapping if we take a look in here i've already set this up this is data mapping if you see my videos you know you understand this y5 is the task name if we look in here y5 is the task name ab5 is the project customer looking in here ab5 is the project so i've mapped every single field so what that's going to do is going to allow us to loop we're going to look in we know the row we're going to look in whatever row as we loop for all the way from 2 to 15 and we're going to load them i'm not going to load in total time and completion we're only going to go to right here we're only going to go to attachment so we see equals column 15. now why are we only going to 15 because these are going to be formulas in fact i got to put those formulas in right now so what are those formulas because i almost forgot so so that's all let's just finish this up 2 to 15 so we're going to take the values of whatever's in row one here's row one all the way up here whatever's inside here we're going to put it in y5 whatever's inside here we're going to put it in ab5 so that's all we're doing in this line of code right here okay so but we're not adding total time and completion percentage so we need to add those in what are those formulas well the completion percent is just simply a division but if there's an, if it's blank it's going to show an error so i want to do if error equals if error and what is the value so it's simply going to be here our total lauded divided by our total so here so a b divided by our total lauded so we know and then that's it so all if it's an error just show blank so we know that it's 95 and change that to a percentage so that's going to be a percentage so we know it's 95 percent complete Perfect, I like that there. But what about our total time and hours? I wanna know the total time, and we need to also format these as time. So let's go ahead and change those. We're gonna go into the more number formats, go into time, and I'll use this one right here. Okay, and also again, probably left justify those. And these two as well, while we're at it. Okay, we've got a date picker, I'll show you that. That's a selection change event, probably surprised to see that. And then, uh, me too, uh, left justify that, there we go. Okay, I like that. So we'll go over that date picker in just a moment. And uh, what we also want to do is add in the total time. I need to know what is the formula. I need to know the total. How do I know that? Well, basically, what we want to do is when I know the start, it's going to be the start date plus the start time, my uh, subtracted from the end date to the end time. So that's essentially it. But then I also want to multiply it times twenty four. Okay, so this formula is simple. It's going to be equals. I need to know that end date plus the end time and we'll multiply that times 24 equals the end date plus the end time and we're going to multiply that times 24 24 hours in a day i want the total number of hours 
then minus, what is a minus? I also want to know the start date plus start time. So here's the start date plus the start time. Adding, I always have to add that in. And then multiplying that times 24. We'll add in another parentheses here so we can make sure that it's all complete. Multiplying that times 24 because I want to extract the hours of the day. So times 24. Okay, very good. So we'll take a look at that. It's going to give us 141 hours for this tax. Uh, task okay so that's looking good if i were to change that to 524 let's change that and we see 8 a.m so that looks like minus three hours 5 p.m we'll change that to 5 p.m so we can get the correct number of hours i like that okay so very good so it's nine hours perfect that's just the way we want it we've got our calculator fields now when we have calculator fields we can save the data to the database that's no problem right we want to save that information here total time completion time but we want when we load this up we do not want to load this information we don't want this number to replace our formula we want to keep our formula so keep that in mind and that's another reason why i put them last that's why they're last so all of these three columns are all a formula these are based on formulas and this is a formula so when we load we only go to this column right here okay so continuing on now that we understand how to load and we see that in action we, so we can see how it works very very well right here what else do we want i want to create a brand new task so new task is simply clearing out a bunch of fields relatively simple and we're going to assign it to this button right here so i'm going to uh, just basically right click assign the macro task delete and we're going to go to task new right here clicking OK. So that means when I click, click here, all the fields are going to get cleared out, and that's exactly what I want to happen. OK, perfect. So that's what, saving the task. If I want to hold down the control, we're going to right click again, click New, and then Task here, and then we're going to save and update. That's the one we want to do. Scrolling down here, this one, and we might as well do the delete one. So holding down the control, again, and here, going back into Task, we're going to delete it, clicking OK. And then I also want to browse for a folder, right? So I have that here. So I'm going to hold down the control. I'm going to zoom in here to make sure that I get both the icon and the shape. I want to capture both of them. Right click, assign the macro. And this is going to be attachment, add the picture. So it's attach, task, add attachment. Here we go. Okay. We also want to create and schedule. We got a new one, task creating that reoccurring schedule, assigning the macros to that. We've got here under task here and then make reoccurring. That's the one I want to do. Okay, we can zoom out and continue on. So now that we've got the macros assigned. Let's continue to go over some of those macros so we can see how they work. We understand new is just clearing a bunch of contents. When we save or update, right? I want to make sure that the required fields, I'm going to just make sure that Y5 is required, right? I want to make sure that they have that. We also probably should use employee to make sure that they've assigned that task. So if Y7 equals MB, this is going to be a task name. I need to make sure that they've assigned a task name. Y, actually Y5, not Y7. So Y5, right? We're going to make sure if that's empty, the task name. AE5 is an employee name. We want to make sure that they enter that. If not, they don't have that information. We want to let the user know, and we're going to exit the sub. Okay, continuing on. Now what I want to do is I want to determine is it a new task or is it an existing task? If it's a new task, you see that ID got cleared out. We know that there's no task row associated in B5. B5 will tell us. However, if there is a task row located in a task ID located in B4, it's going to generate that task row. So B5 will tell us is it a new or an existing. If B5 is empty, it's a new task. When it's a new task, we want to create a brand new row based on the first available row of our task sheet here. Then what we want to do is I want to set that brand new task ID, that next available task ID that's in B6. I want to take that and I want to place it in B4. And I also want to take that and put it directly in column A, that brand new one. So we're going to do that right here. And in R is going to take on the formula, R is that row. We're not really uh, utilizing it in this, but I really like to have it in case it's usable. So we're just putting the row in here in case but it's not really used in this training. Okay, if it's an existing task, all we need to do is extract the task row from B5. This time we're gonna use data mapping, but this time we're going all the way to column 17. This is column 17. And that means whatever values are in these cells, here, 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 we're just going to place in the appropriate row. How do I know what cells? Because all those cells are right up here. So I know what cells to extract the data from and I know what row to place it in. So all we need to run a loop is from column two all the way to column 17 
and our column 18 is already placed. So that's all we need to do using that reverse data mapping right here. It's going to bring over the data. It's going to save or update the data. Let's put that in. Save or update data. And we use for both new and existing records, we use this line of code. Okay, this is, I've got a, a brand new macro, right? Now there's a way, there's a reason I got, so when I click here, when I click save or update, I want this message box to appear, right? Oops, I forgot to save this. So I want a message box to appear. When I create multiple transactions, okay, we're just creating a bunch of transactions, all right? Okay, so when I create this, I don't want the save button. So how can I ensure that we do that? How can I ensure that we get a message box, but only when they click this button? If I create a bunch, just like what I did by accident, if I create a bunch of them, I don't want to have that message come up. So I'll show you a little trick. So, but we need to give a name, save button. So save button. Notice it didn't come up. All right. Why didn't it come up? If I click save, there's going to be no message box. Why is that saving? Because I need to assign that button name. This is going to be called save button. Now I want to assign the same name to the icon in case they click the icon. But how do we do that? Because if I try to do it from here, it's not going to do it. It's just going to revert back to the button. So it didn't. If I click on the icon again, you see it's not. It's still the same name. And that's because we have already a shape with that name called save button. But I really want to force the same name. So all I need to do is just go into the selection pane and take a look. We see that the save button's here, but that picture, that icon doesn't have it. So all I need to do is just change it from right here. So I can have, now I have two shapes with the same. So now if I select that, we see that task has been saved. Why is that? Because the application caller, the name of the shape that called that macro is called save button, then show the message box. And we, the reason we want it here is when, because I'm going to run this exact same macro. I'm going to run that when I create this. So we, when we create multiple ones, all we're going to do is change the start date and a bunch of things and just run the save update. But I don't want this to go up. This to this message box tasks and save to appear. Like if you create ten different tasks using this, then I certainly don't want to have that message box pop up ten different times. So to avoid that, we're running the same macro. But but what's different is the button that called it. Notice this button is not called save, right? Save button. So this button's called something we didn't give it a name, but it's not called it. Okay, so that's why we can do it. So very, very important. So that's all we do for save, okay? And last thing, we want to update the task list. In fact, notice that when we created that, we, want, we don't want this task list. So I don't want this task list to update if I'm using, if I'm creating this, notice that task list, it, it, it refresh and refresh and refresh and refresh. And I, let me show, let me just save and update, it'll refresh again. Okay, so basically, when we create multiple tra multiple tasks with this, I only want this list just to, to to show up to refresh once, just once. So how do we do that? If the application calls, then show the message box, and else, okay. So and also, I want to refresh the task list only if it's a. There we go. So there we go, and if. So now this list will only refresh if they've used this button. If they use this button, they will not. And that's what I want. Okay, very good. Now we can turn our attention to create and schedule. Now I did this by accident just a minute ago, but we're able to now schedule reoccurring tasks automatically with a click of a button as we did that. And we can save it on basically any interval. In fact, we need to create, make a drop down of this. So we're going to go into the admin and we want to take a look at which ones we want. If we take a look inside here, we see that this is called frequency and that's what we want to make the drop down list. Going back into main, we're going to go into the data and then data validation here. We're going to check on list and we're going to say equals here frequency okay so that's the frequency we want to set we want to send it to days weekdays monday through friday weeks or months so we can create tasks based on any frequency setting any starting on and then any ending on date so we'll automatically do that with a create button and i did just that here with this so let's take a look at what that might look like if we take a look inside the tasks scroll down here we see that we've got a bunch of tasks 510 512 Skipping 513 and 514, that's a Saturday and a Sunday, going all the way to 523 here, we see. And we also want to make sure that we've got, oops, 
Ah, there we go. 27th and 28th are also, so we can see it, 27th, 28th, and then the 20th and the 21st are also Saturday and Sunday. So it skips the weekends and puts it only on the weekdays. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, very, very cool. So it's going to create the same task. It's going to update, of course, it's going to update the start days and it's going to update the end days based on that. But that's what we want to do. So let's go ahead and take a look inside that macro. And then that macro is right here called task make recurring. We want to mention the frequency as a string. I also want to know the frequency quantity as long and the total time as double. And then I also want to know, we're going to know the start on as date, the unit uh, until date, until date, you know, so when are we starting? Start on until we need to know both of those. So those are also going to be uh, date values here inside VBA and we also want the start date and end date. Okay, so now we're going to focus on that main. We want to make sure that the task, there's a task name we need to make sure. So if Y5 is empty, of course, we need to let the user know. We also want to make sure that Y7 and Y9 cannot be empty. Please make sure that task has a start and end dates. We need to ensure start and end dates. Without those, we cannot move forward. Continuing on, if, as, long as, there's a, as long as we have those, if B7 is less than four, please make sure to enter recurring frequency, start on until date fields to make this task recurring. Remember, we added this field here, this count A and B7, counting all those fields. If one of them goes blank, this becomes less than four and then the user does not have the ability to add additional ones we need to make sure that they've entered all the required fields so they cannot add so we want to make sure if it's less than four then those required fields have not been entered we want to then set some variables so to do that I want to get all the information for that I want to know that. So where are we going to get that? So the total time is equal AE9. I want to know how much time this task is going to take in hours. So that's simply the, the reason for that is that we're going to take this and we're going to add an amount of hours. It's going to automatically tell us the end date and end time. So we know that. So that means as our start date changes, we automatically can make that end date and end time dynamic. So the total time is based on 89. We're going to divide it by 24. So I want to know that in decimal format. Okay. I want to know the frequency quantity that's going to come from Y18. Uh, I also want to know the frequency. What is the frequency that's going to come from Z18? The start on date AB18 and the until date AD18. So we want to get all those variables. Now the start date is going to be what? It's going to be that start on day. The first date, this is the date that's going to change. So the first date is going to be whatever's in AB. So AB18, AB we have that there. So we've got the start on day. We're going to set the initial starting date and I want to add in the start time, right? So the start time, the end date is going to be actually start date is going to be on the date itself not this we don't need that okay so the end date is going to be the start date plus the total time that's going to set the end date plus the total time i need to make sure we're going to be just taking the integer of that but i want to make sure that we've got covered the total time so that's going to add in the essential hours on that okay now we're going to run a do while loop i want to do while the start date is less than or equal to the until date right so the start date is going to keep increasing and increasing all the way up until the until date so how are we going to do that? First thing, what we're going to do is we're going to set Y7 to that start date. So Y7 is going to take on that new start date as it updates. Y9 is going to take the integer of the end date, meaning the integer, meaning I only want the whole number. So it's going to exclude any of the hours. So the start time and the end time will always stay the same here. So that's all we're going to do. So just going to make sure that we've added up all the hours. That's going to add the days, of course. And then in case there's any extra hours, we're just going to remove those extra hours because they're already built up in the end time. So we're just going to create, set the ending date, date as a whole number. If it has decimal numbers, that means it includes the hours. I don't want to include the hours in this date because we've already got them included inside the end time on AB9. Okay, we're going to save and update this task. Once I've updated these dates, we're going to save. Remember, I said we're going to run this same macro again. So when we run this macro here, the save update, we don't want to see each time this task is saved. So only when the application calls the save button. So this is not save button. So that means these two things are only, in fact, I'm going to take this. I want to make sure that this gets run at the end of this macro right here. Okay, so we do want to run it, but only at the end of the macro. Okay, 
So we're going to save that. So now let's save what I want to do is I want to update the start date and the end dates. Actually, just the start date is sufficient for us. So what I want to do is I'm going to set select cases frequency. It's going to be based on the weekdays function. And if the case is days, we're going to use the date add function. D is for a single day, every day. So we're going to simply add it based on the frequency, every one day, every two day, et cetera, et cetera. What if it's a weekday? If it's a weekday, I want to use the W function. But if it's a seven, meaning sun, meaning Saturday, seven's a Saturday, one is a Sunday. If it's those, we're going to add two. Or I don't want to skip that and go directly to Monday. If it's a Sunday, meaning one, I want to skip one. I want to add one and going directly to Monday. So in either one of these cases, it's going to go to Monday, ensuring that the weekends are not scheduled. Okay, what if it's a week? So we're going to use the WW. This is going to add however many weeks to the start date. So we can schedule every one week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever. Also using the date add to add month. This is the month string. So we're going to add however many months to the start date. Okay, then we're going to, now we're going to update the end date. The end date is simply the start date plus the total time. And that's going to end. So we're just going to continue that loop and that's going to create automated tasks. So for example, if I wanted to create one, let's say every week, every one week, starting on, let's say May 10th and going all the way to, let's say July 30th, and we click create and schedule, it's going to do just that. And if we take a look inside our task, it's going to update, refresh that list once. So there we see it refresh only once. We're going into the task. Of course, we can see that all the way in this or that. So here we can take a look. We see that we've got all the tasks that got created here. Uh, starting, I think, believe at 510. So every week they got created all the way until here we see September 27th. So that's exactly so September 30th. So up until that, that before that, which is exactly what we want. So all those tasks got created and then the list got refreshed. So if we take a look here at the bottom of this list, we see all the way that the list got that this list got completed and we can see automatically it's selected all the way down here. I would definitely probably freeze these panes up. Of course, you want to filter these so you only show certain things. Okay, great. So we see how the reoccurring creating recurring tasks automatically schedule. Really cool. And the, the list gets updated. What about task delete? Task delete, relatively simple on this one. Just give the confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete this task? If it's yes, delete the task. If it's no, we're going to exit the sub. Okay, so we're going to, if it's empty, meaning there's no row that's associated with this task, it's probably new, we can skip the deleting of the row. If not, we're going to delete the row using this inside the task database, task row, deleting the entire row. We're going to run the macro new task. It's going to clear all the fields, and then I'm going to update that task list. So if I want to delete a task, all I just click is delete. Are you sure you want to delete this task? Yes, it's going to go, going to clear it out and automatically it's going to be ready for a new one. Okay, I like that. That's working really good. That's it for the task macros. Very, very cool. So we've covered all the task macros. Let's take a look at some of the scheduling macros. We can work on that. Okay, inside the schedule, we'll go ahead and click on the menu here. And what I want to do basically is I want to create a shape that's going to extend uh, for as long as it is needed within the given day, right? And if it if the task does fall at any time within the day, in other words, if the start time is anywhere within the day or before the day, and the task is inside the day, even if it finishes after, I want it to appear here. So what is the best way to do that? Well, we're going to use shapes. Shapes are really fast and shapes can represent those tasks. So what we want to do is we want to create a sample shape to do just that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a, a sample shape. That's the best way by inserting and we're going to use a shape and we'll use this particular rectangle rounded corners. This is the one that I'd like to do. And something about like this is for a sample and we want it more round. So something like that would look good. And let's go ahead and shape format. And now the width is not gonna matter, but the height will make right around point two. The width is gonna be dynamic based on, of course, the task itself, right? If it's a longer task, it is gonna show up here. I would also like to create a picture. So I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm going to basically make this a round circle. So the width of this is going to be 0.2. Okay, so just like that is what I want to create. So I'm going to give these individual names. So if we take a look at it, I want it called sample. This one's going to be called sample task shape. Sample task shape. And another one is going to be sample employee shape. 
Okay, so we've given them names. Now we don't really want them here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them off. And I would like to give it a default. And that means if there's no picture associated with that employee, I would like to have it a default. So how do we do that? We're going to insert a picture into that. I've got a default picture. Again, if you want all these pictures and all these icons and everything, I make them all available to our silver and gold members. Silver can be on YouTube and also on Patreon as well. Inside the predictor tracker, we've got some icons here and I got an employee picture. So I've got a default picture here, which I'm gonna insert that. Okay, so we see the default picture here, but I want that inserted in the shape. So to do that, right, what I wanna do is we're going to go into the format, the shape format, sorry, it was off the screen, and we wanted a picture or a text fill. So we're gonna insert that same one as a picture from file and we'll just insert that default picture. That's gonna set it up. Now, if there's no employee picture available, we will just use that default picture. Okay, and I also want some text. So let's put in some sample text here inside this shape. And I wanna make sure that we've set accordingly. Obviously, we need to go ahead and center that here. And I'm gonna left justify that, but I wanna give enough room for that icon. In other words, that icon should appear right here at the beginning and i want to make sure it doesn't involve that sample so what we need to do is we need to set inside the text here we are going to set up our left margin to be about 0.25 or 0.2 let's see yeah about 0.2 looks just real good we don't need a right margin we don't need a top margin and we don't need a bottom margin okay now if we take a look inside our that's just the way I want it. Our, our colors here, our task status colors are all kind of light. So we can go with the black font on that. So let's go ahead and go to back into the main. And I'm going to set the back fill here. It doesn't necessarily matter because hopefully it's going to be changed as long as the color is found. So I'm just going to set it to that light blue. And I'm going to set the font to black. Okay, so the color of the background will change. We don't necessarily need a border on it. Uh, it's a you know whatever you if you like borders fine i ne don't necessarily need a border on that so let's go ahead and uh, remove the border on the shape outline so we can go to no outline okay and then maybe a little bit of a shadow on this so when it's a nice feature to have a little shadow so we're going to do just that under the shape options here under the shadow and we're going to set the presets here i'll give it a little bit of a shadow but not too much so we're going to reduce that to about two points and this to about two points okay a slight shadow and that pump that is nice okay i like the way that that looks and now what we're going to do is now that we have one called sample task shape and we have one that's called sample employee shape basically what i want to do is i want to create a filter for every single task that falls within this date and so what we need to do is we need to have another advanced filter based on the date here in ai3 so if we take a look inside the task, I've got that set up already based on advanced filter. So if we look here, if we go all the way to here, we see something called schedule criteria. And it's both based on the start and the end date. And I want to know any type, if we take a look, let's go back to the main. I've given this a name, let's say called scheduled date. There's a name range here called scheduled date. So that name range is easier to use inside the formula, so we know. So I need to make sure that the start date is less than or equal to scheduled date, less than or equal, and greater than equal, the end date must be greater than equal to scheduled date. Let me say that again. Okay, the start date must be less than or equal to scheduled date, and the end date must be greater than or equal to schedule date. So I want to know all the tasks that fall into that. And we're going to get something like this. So we see a start date here and an end date here, right? It's within that range, right? So we want to make sure this shows up. This one starts on the 15th and ends on the 17th. So it also falls on the 15th. So we can see that there's different ones. This one starts earlier and ends later. So we can kind of get a good understanding of exactly the type of task that we want located in here. So I'm going to take a look. Once I get those results, I want those results to appear in here based on that advanced filter. I'm going to loop through each one of these results. I'm going to create a shape for each one of these. Now, I also need to extract the employee picture. If we take a look inside here, the employee picture is here. Now, this is just the name of the picture. When we combine the name of the picture along with the folder, now I've got a name range called picture folder here. So when we combine the, the folder along with the name, we get a full file path. And that is exactly what we have here for all of our. So this is the path here. So we've got the path to all those pictures. So I want to take those pictures and I want to embed them inside, inside our schedule. 
shape. So how are we going to do that? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to extract those employee pictures. If I know the employee name, which is located right here, how do I extract the employee picture from here? Well, I can use the named range for that to help us add a formula. If we go into the name manager, we go down to employee, we have one called employee pictures. It's the dynamic named range based on employee pictures. So I'm going to index this named range and I'm going to use the match. I'm going to match the employee name. If it's found, it's going to return that picture. I'm going to take that formula. I'm going to put it right up here. Here it is. We're going to index the employee picture. We're going to match it based on whatever the employee name is at AM3 and the employee name. Right? It's, it's a single column. If there's an error, going to return blank. So what we need to do is once we get all the results down in here, we're going to determine the last row. In this case, it's 20. I'm going to take that formula and I'm going to bring it all the way down here. And that's going to let us know exactly what picture is associated with what person. As I loop through these, I create a shape. If there's an employee picture, I then insert that picture based on that path. And that's exactly what we're going to do inside that particular schedule reflex. So how are we going to do that? Well, that comes with a macro. So we're going to go in back into a module called schedule macros. We're going to double click on that and we've got schedule refresh here. Inside this, we've got a bunch of variables that I'll be going over as we go through the macro. So we have a task shape. This is a variable called it a shape task shape and shape. What we need to do anytime we refresh the schedule, I need to remove any of the shapes that are associated with the task, any of the shapes that are associated with the employee picture because we're refreshing it. So we need to remove all the existing ones. So focused here for each task shape in shapes for all the shapes inside. We want to look for very specific names. Any shape that contains employee task, we want it removed. How do we know? We're going to use the in string command. We're looking for this string inside the name of the shape. If that string is found, meaning it's greater than zero, then we're going to delete it. Now, what we want to make sure is any other shape. We certainly don't want to make sure. We don't want to delete this, our sample task shape. So we want to make sure that we've included a unique name that has only those this string here for that shapes and nothing else. Okay. So we're going to remove the tasks and we're going to remove any shapes that are called employee picture, EMP picture. So we're deleting all of those and we're just going to loop through that. That happens very quick. Okay. Then what I want to do is I want to get the scheduled date. That scheduled date is going to be an AI three. So I'm going to put that into a variable. That's a date variable. I also want to know the start time. What is the schedule start time? That is very important. It's going to be what is it based on the schedule start time located in the admin start time. Why is that important? If we take a look inside here, we know the start time is a named range called start times It's eight o'clock because I need to know exactly what column to start it on. Right. It's going to be based on the start time. We know eight o'clock is the start time. So anything that starts before would, of course, start right here. Anything that starts later would start maybe here. So we need to position it based on that start time. So that start time is very, very important. Okay, so continuing on, we also want to know the schedule interval, that interval based also on the admin screen. If we look in here, we've got the interval. That's the name range we work with before. It's 30 minutes of currently what it is. So also what I want to know is I want to know that employee picture folder and that's going to be based on the admin picture folder which is this one right here okay so now that we have all of that the employee now we've got all those variables set up this is a string variable this is a double variable this is a date variable and this is also a date variable okay so we're going to focus back on back on the tasks now this task is where we need to run our advanced filter using all the data having our criteria here and getting those results right in here once we determine the last row, bringing down the formula. That's exactly what we're going to do right now. First thing we want to do is clear any results all the way from AK all the way through AS. So clearing any previous results, that's very important, especially when we have formulas. Determining the last row, if it's less than four, we have no data, we can exit the sub. Running our advanced filter, determining based on AH through AI3, that's our criteria right up here. The results are going to go AK2 to AR. Okay. Then we're going to determine the last result row based on column AK. That's the task ID, which is a required field. Then if it's less than three, we're going to exit the sub. That means there's no results there. Okay, now is the time we want to bring down those employee pictures, that formula that's coming from AS1. I want to, in a single line, I want to bring it all the way down from AS3 through AS, the last results row, using the formula to formula exchange. It's going to bring down that formula correctly. 
Okay, now we're ready to run our loop. We're starting in three, going all the way to the last row. We're then going to create and position shapes for every single task. To do that, we are going to run a loop. The result row, which is the long variable, we're going to run that loop. We're going to get all the variables. So I need to get all this information into variables. And we're going to do just that. So we can go over rel relatively quickly because we're just going to go through every line all the way from AK. I want the task ID in a string, the task name, the employee name, the start date. It's the date. The start time, the end date, and the end time. So I need all that information. The status of the task, that's very important because it's the status that's going to tell us what color. And the employee picture, this is just the, the picture name itself. So all that's going to come, we're putting all that into variables. I want to set the starting column. What is the starting column? I know that if the start date, let's say it's 5 9, if I know the start date is less than the current date, I know we're going to start that off right here in column. What column is that? Let's go ahead and type in equals column. So we know that that column is 35. So anything that starts on the day before or if it's the current time, like 8 o'clock a.m., if it's the current start time, we know that starting column is 35. So that's what we're going to focus on. Earth. If the start date is less than the scheduled date, less than that, or the start time is equal or less than the scheduled start time, that 8 a.m., then set the first column to 35, right? We know that that is. However, what if it starts sometime within the day? We're going to set the scheduled start column is going to be 35 plus the integer of the start time minus the scheduled start time. What does that mean? What if the start time is 8 o'clock a.m., right? What if our scheduled start time is 9 o'clock a.m.? 9, right, minus 8 is 1, right, 1 hour, divided by the schedule interval. What if this is 30 minutes, right? If I've got 1 hour divided by 30 minutes, then there's 2 that go into that, right, 2. So we know that 35 plus 2 is 37. We need to know to put it in column 37. That's where we're going to go. So that means that 9 a.m. is going to start in 37. Again, 9 o'clock. Minus 8 o'clock is one hour divided by the schedule interval, which is 30 minutes, is going to get us two. So if I know to add two plus 35, is going to get us that exact starting column. So that's how we figure the starting column. That's it. What about the ending column? I need to know where does this column end? And just like we did again, again, if the end date, we're looking at the end date, if it's after the schedule end date is after the 15th, we know we're going to go all the way to the last one. And what is that last column? Let's take a look at that last column so we know. The last column is column 62. Okay, so if the last column is 62, we know we're going all the way to 62. Or maybe the last time is either on or after that 9.30 p.m. If it is, then we know we are going to then put it to the last column. So we can do that inside the code. If the end date is greater than the scheduled date, let's say the end date is the 16th, 17th, or the end time is greater than or equal to the end time. Now, what is that end time? I've given this a named range called, let's, I need to do that right now, end time. Okay, there we go. So I've given this a named range. This, this one right here is called end time. Oops, I think I had end time there. Oops, let's look at that. I'm going to add one more there there because I had this at the end time, so 63. In my sample, I had this all this named range was already created on here. So that's why I just had one more column, so BK. Okay, so this is our end time. See it right here. So this is column 63. So that's what we're going to be focused on here. So one more additional column. We're good with that. Okay, so I like that. Now what we want to do is we just need to check for that schedule column. So if that end date is greater than the schedule date, or the end time is greater than the end time, we have it labeled here in the name range, then we know the schedule column is going to be 63. But what about if it's less? What if that end time is somewhere in here? How do we know that? Well, we can use that. The schedule end time, again, is 35. Now, plus, what is the end time minus the schedule? So if it ends at 3 p.m., and we know the schedule start time is 8 p.m., then we know it's 7 hours divided by 30 minutes, so we know we're at 14 columns. So it's 14 plus 35, we know it's gonna end in column, uh, what is it, 49, right? So that's how we can set the end column. So basically we're setting the start column, we're setting the end column, so we know how long to make our shape. We know it's gonna be this long, starting and then once we know that end column. Okay, very good, so we have that. Now what I wanna do is I wanted to determine the task color. We've already extracted the status right here. So if I know the status, 
and I can find the status here. Let's say I look in all the statuses and I found it, it's on row nine. If I look at what color O and row nine is, if I know what that color is, I can automatically extract that color and I can change the shape to that color. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So determining the task color, we're gonna set the status row. We're looking for something, we're looking for that task status. We've already defined it right here. Where are we going to look? We are going to look inside let's pull that up here the status right we have a named range called status it's inside our admin screen we're looking inside that named range i'm looking at values i'm looking at whole and i want to get the row if it's not found it would create an error therefore i have on air resume next and on air go to zero we're going to run a test as long as the status row is not zero then we're going to set the status color to the admin remember i said i mentioned column o and I want to know the interior column, interior color of that based on the row. So we're just matching the row, O plus that row, the interior color, I'm going to put that color and I'll put it in a string variable called status color. That is what's going to hold this status color. It's a number, it's a string variable. Now I need to determine what row. I know what the columns, I know the starting and end columns, but what about the row? I need to determine the row. I need to look up all the employees here and I need to determine exactly what row the employee is located on simply using a find starting in five and going to the last row. So we can do that through here, determine the, the row that it's on. So this is gonna be called that the schedule row. We're gonna look in the main starting in AH5 all the way through H99, we're looking for the employee name. We're looking at values and I want to extract the row. That's going to get that schedule row. We're looking for that employee. I want to find him so I know what row to place it on. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, if it's, is, if it's not found, meaning the schedule row is zero, we're simply going to skip everything and go to the next task, which is going to go right down here. However, if it is found, we can continue. Now we're ready to create the shapes. What is that shape? That shape, that sample task shape that we created, we are now going to duplicate it. So this sample task shape, I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna give it a very unique name. It's gonna be called employee task. That's the string that I'm gonna to add to that. And that's the same string that we are gonna initially remove employee tasks when we remove everything. So we wanna make sure they're the same. Once we create that, I wanna make sure it is unique. So I'm gonna assign the task ID. Since that task ID is unique for every single task, we can assign the task ID to make sure that each shape is then unique. Then once we've created it and given it this name, I can then work with it in this line. I'm gonna give it a fill color, the fill for color RGB equals the status color, okay? So I should probably add something just in case. If status color does not equal empty, then, right? Just in case it wasn't found, right? Then we can tell, right? So we only, we only set the status color right up here. We only set it up here, but if the status row equals zero, then the status color would be an empty string. So I just want to make sure that we're, we're, we're keeping the existing color. So we want to make sure if the status color does not equal empty, then the fill for color equals the status color. Set shape task color. Okay, very good. So now that we've set the color on that, we can set the left position. Now that left position is gonna be based on that starting row, whatever that left position is, that column there, excuse me. So the left position is gonna be based on the row, of course, the row, but mostly the starting column. What is that starting column? That's gonna give us that left position. The top is gonna to be based on the schedule row. The, the column is insignificant but the top is gonna to be based on that. That sets the top position. And what about the width? The width is very important. The width is gonna be whatever that starting column is all the way to the ending column. So that's the entire width of the shape. So we're gonna use a range for that. I'm gonna use a range based on the starting column all the way to the ending column. And whatever the width of that column, whatever the width is, that is the width of our shape. So if the width of this here, all the way from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., whatever the width is, that's the width of our shape. And that sets the width of our task shape. Then what do I want inside the task? I'm just gonna put the task name inside that. So the text inside is gonna be the text name. Okay, great, so that covers the task shape, but what about the picture? Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna test out the picture. So again, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this picture here, sample employee shape, and I'm gonna duplicate it. So we're duplicating it right here and we're giving it a unique name, again, employee picture, and the task ID, giving that duplicate. Then we're gonna set the picture path is equal to the folder and a backslash and the employee pick. So we have, 
remember the folder is coming directly from our admin the picture itself is coming from here we put it in a string variable combining that with a between a backslash it's going to give us that full file path for that picture what we're going to be doing is we are going to then check with employee picture the left um, so what I want to do is I want to regardless even if it's a bad picture or an incorrect file path or there's no picture I still want to place this shape I still want this shape no matter what even if the pictures are wrong and I'll show you what that's going to look like in a moment okay so with the shapes employee and the task ID I'm going to pull the left position is going to be based on that starting column the top position is going to be based on that schedule row so that's the same as the original shape up here the left and the top are the same now what we're going to do is I'm going to check the picture path to make sure it's correct if it's not we're not going to do anything if it is correct meaning does not equal empty then we're going to take that little shape we're going to fill it with a user picture and that picture is going to be based on the picture path and that is it that's all we need to do so when do we want to run this macro well i want to run the macro when we click today right which is going to place or basically i want to run the macro anytime something changes if i click here i want to run that macro it's going to be a change event on ai3 as you see it just happened how did that happen well, we did a change event on ai3 let's go into the code and we're going to go into main and it's called a worksheet change event and it's going to be based on ai3 when we make a schedule date change the schedule refresh we're going to refresh the schedule running that macro so you see it automatically ran so we take a look at this we see here we can get rid of this now we've used that and we, we see here that this particular task, and I think in, in the Patreon update, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a macro. When I select a task, I want it to automatically go into the project task, and I want it to automatically load that. I think that would be really cool. Remind me. Okay, so that's good. So we see how we have different tasks and different pictures. Now, what happens if the pictures are not correct? I don't want it to throw an error. So I'm gonna just change the path, making sure, because that's gonna make an incorrect path, and that's what I want. So now what I want to do is just gonna double click here, and I want the default picture to show up. Even though there's no picture, I, I don't want to create an error, I just want to show that. And that's exactly what I want to happen. So that even when there's no uh, employee picture, I still want that to show up, so that giving the user the, the understanding that that's where a picture would go. But when we do have a correct picture path, then we see that the pictures will display. So I've, I've made the fix to that okay so and of course we double click on here or choose any date and it's automatically going to update okay on the 14th we only have a few on the 15th is where most of my data is okay great so we see how that's automatically going to refresh i would like that a little bit quicker i'll probably do that application screen updating true and false would help that okay so now what we want to do is we want to get previous today and next day those are the macros those are very very easy those particular macros let's go back into that not this workbook let's go back into the schedule macros we just finished off the refresh and now we have three very very simple macros today all we're going to do is take the current date and put it in ai3 in fact i probably don't even have to refresh it why don't i have to do that because as soon as ai3 changes it is going to automatically update the macro so we actually don't need these because i added a change event so don't need that even so all i need to do for the schedule take whatever's inside ai3 and subtract one for the previous days for the next day take whatever is in ai3 and add one and that's it that's all we have to do we don't even have to refresh the schedule because any changes to this will automatically make that happen so now we can assign our macro so i'm going to right click here assign the macro going to be that previous day so we're going to go down to schedule and then we're going to set that to the previous day this one we're going to right click and then assign the macro here obviously and that's going to be scheduled today so the today and then lastly we want the next day again right clicking signing the macro schedule here schedule here and then that's going to be the next day clicking okay all right so today is the 31st and i don't think we have too much that is correct previous day previous day previous day okay very good and we got a pop-up calendar that's going to be a selection change event when i make a selection change i want that calendar to appear that's going to end up here inside we've got lots of you saw that happen a lot so if we take a look inside the main selection change event if i select any of these cells we are going to run a macro that checks to make sure that calendar and we're going to run another macro that shows that calendar that that particular macro is located inside here of uh, this time picker macro i was thinking about adding a time picker on it but i didn't so i want to remove that i have a time picker but it needs work before i use it it was kind of a headache so it's going to be here pop-up calendar it's in here calendar hide calendar show they're in here okay we don't need to go over that they're incidental to this training and it's already long enough okay great so we've got this schedule working quite nice i really like that 
Maybe I want to add a thicker line here, but that's okay. It's pretty good. It's a good idea. It's a good task scheduler. It shows. Again, the only other thing I might want to add is on a single click to go to that individual task. I think that would be smart. Very easy to do. I'll be adding that in the Patreon update. Please join us on Patreon. You will not regret it. It's a great way. And then I'll probably want to extend this let's say that's that's what we want we want the full so when we now that we we can hide these right so we don't need those hide calls hide those columns and we can see that everything looks really good so we've got the scheduler now and lastly we've got the dashboard so that's going to be next the employees we've got that set up the scheduler project tasks looking really good all right one last thing and that is the dashboard all right let's get to that i'm going to show you exactly how we do that schedules looking just perfect all right on to that dashboard okay if we take a look inside the dashboard we don't have much going on yet so that's what we're going to do okay i've got this i don't think we're going to be using this just yet but i've got some date ranges now the idea is this when i make a change to the date range i want the from and to date to automatically update and that's going to be based on the data now we've got a bunch of data that i'm going to go over with you right now so let's take a look inside this sheet called dashboard data and i'm going to create charts and graphs based on all this data i want to show the tasks by quantity the status so i've got all of our statuses here it's going to be directly linked from this if we see that it's basically linked directly from it so if i take our task status and i copy this and i go into our dashboard data and i paste the links here we see that it's going to be all automatically pasted in here okay so that's exactly what i want to do and it's going to be all the way up until i should probably color these up until this one here so i should probably add some some formatting here just so i understand how far it extends so oh, i do have it let's just uh color the borders let's do this uh, line color so we can understand exactly where this stops and starts okay so we're going to color all those borders there and that's better and so i understand that this pending so what i want to know is how many of these tasks are pending however however inside this date range from here to here so i've given this name we're going to call this from date and we're going to call this to date so to date so we know that as these changes if we want we are going to automatically give these so we can use these named ranges in form this is the from date as you can see the named range right up here and this is the to date so now that we know that we can use that inside the formulas and also let's go ahead and just go over a little bit of our some of the named ranges that we've created okay so back inside our tasks i just want to go over some named ranges because we're going to be using those inside the formulas so we're going to go to the name manager and we're going to look inside our task and i've got basically a task id here for our tasks as we can see before a task metric so for each one of these i've got the ta task metric so the unit or time we've got one for the start date we've got one for the status and we've got one for the total actual number spent whether it's time or units we've got the total allocated time or units here We've got the total time here. So I want to know what the actual time is. So that's the, the actual time. We have the task type here based on the task type. And we have the task unit type here, whether it's days, hours, minutes, or, or a unit type like emails or something like that. So we've got all those named ranges that are going to help us inside that data. So let's take a look at that. Now, if I want to know all of the, all of the tasks that have the pending status, within our given date range we can do that we're going to use the count if now what am i counting i want to use the task status must be a3 pending but i only want to know the tasks in which the start date is greater than or equal to from greater than or equal and the from date okay so it's going to be greater than the from date and it's got to be less than or equal to two dates so we're basing it on the start date so our start date has to be within that time frame that's what i want i just want to know the start date inside so all i need to do is then just copy down this formula here and it's going to automatically display so we're going to create that and i also want to know the total tasks the total task is simply a sum of all the tasks there okay great so we've got the total task that will also help us in i want to display that inside the donut chart i also want to know all the task quantities by type this is by status and this is by type again this time we're using a count if but based on the count task type also within the start date on the from date and the start date to the less than or equal to two dates so we're using the same date range that we have however we're simply counting based on the task type and we've got all of our task type here 
inside here. So it's going to be based directly a link from admin L6. So basically, we've taken all the task type here, I've copied that, and I've gone into the dashboard data and I've pasted those links again here, just like that, pasted the links. And that's all we have. And then again, I gotta get color that again, just so we know. Let's just highlight. I want to highlight all that so I understand where the links end. So I think that's gonna be helpful. It's helpful to you. So we know that that this is a link cell and this is not. Okay, so we've got that. I've got the total. I also want to know all the time-based tasks. Now it's very important. I want to separate time-based tasks and unit-based tasks. And why is that important? Let's just go back into the dashboard of the project task here. And I want to show you something. So on a unit-based task, we're counting something. I want to count maybe APIs. And we're counting. I want to know how many allotted and how many were completed, right? So that's we're counting some type of unit. However, in a time-based task, we might be counting number of minutes, hours, days, or weeks. So I really want to separate them. And it's very important because if we're using a time-based task, when we go over, that's not good. When we're using a unit-based task, when we go over, that's good, right? We want to produce more units in a given amount of time, right? So if I look here in the unit-based, if I create more APIs, 30, and I have 30, but I've only done 28, that's less than ideal. But if the less is time, so basically I just want to separate time and units. Less is good in time, more is good in units, okay? So that's why we're separating at them. That's why we want to know the unit types. So here's some unit types, minutes, hours. I want to know how many, what's the total time allotted from all the tasks within the given period, within the given period, and remember that given period is based directly on our schedule here, excuse me, on our dashboard here, based on the from and to date. So that's where we're going to go. So to count that, it's simply going to use the sum if, and we're, this time I'm summing the task, all of the allotted time. I want to know all the allotted time, or these, remember, these are time-based, so a lot of number, time, time, a lot of total time. I want to know how many minutes or hours I'm separating, it, days, weeks, or month, because certain tasks can be based on different. So we're using the sum if, and I want to make sure the task metric is only time. Remember, this is not for units. This is only for time. I want to know only when the unit type is G3, when it's minutes. And of course, I want to make sure the task start date is greater than or equal to from date, and the task start date is less than or equal to two date okay so we're basing on the start date from and then two date okay so that's the total time and then we just have to bring down this formula for all of them the actual spent same formula except we're now summing total actual spent all the time actually spent and then i want a completion percentage if there's an error i'm simply going to divide i3 divided by a3 we see that uh, they spent a little bit more time than they were allocated. So this is bad, right? We want it less. We want the completion to be 80 or 90 or 70%, not over, right? We don't want to go over time. However, in the unit base, we do want to go over. So it's kind of, right? So this is good, 95%. We've allocated 40 hours. It only took us 38 total hours. So we're within we're 95%. That's very good. Okay, so we see the tasks are really good here. So we can then just create the percentage. Now, also, I've got unit-based tasks. Unit-based tasks are very good, important. So what I want to do is I want to create these units. And now, these are units are based on what? They're based on the unique units based on this. So notice we have uh, calls and APIs and sales. So what I want is I want a unique list, unique list of all of the unit types. VBA can help us with that. So let's go into the dashboard macros. This is a very small one, it's called dashboard refresh. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna get the unique unit types. So to do that, I wanna clear all the data from G12 to G99. So if we go in here, we see G12 through G, and just gonna create clear that out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run an advanced filter, and I'm gonna use the criteria range as AV2 to AV3. Let's take a look at that, running that advanced filter, but this time the criteria is going to be AV2, the units, right? We only want units, right? We don't want time-based. I want unit-based, right? Units are calls, time is hours. We've already done that. I'm really focused on units, so I only want to know what type, like email sent, call sent. I want the unique list of units, and I want it there. So I want to get that unique list here, and then I want to take that list, and I want to bring it directly over in here, inside here. But first, we need to clear out any of the data here. So we've cleared that out here. Clearing that out here, clearing all the contents, determining the last row, getting the last, if it's less than four, 
We're going to get the we're going to run an advanced filter from K3 through L. We don't need to use all of the data, right? I don't need to use it just from here. K3, K3 metric through L. So this is the only two I have to understand. I want the unique values when unit is unit. Okay, great. So we have that. That's going to get us our return value. We want the results in AX2. So when the results come directly inside AX2, they're going to come down here, determine the last row and bring all of the data over. So determine the last row and then G12 through G in the last results row plus nine, because this starts at 12, this starts at three, we need to compensate nine, bringing that data over. Okay, so once I have that data here, our formulas will take over. These are going to be exactly the same, except this time, again, total, total allotted, but the metric is going to be unit. Metric is unit, and the task is going to be based on B here, right here, when it's on G12. Okay, so we just need to bring that down. Again, this is going to sum in the total actual and the completion percentage. So it's exactly the same, and all we need to do is just bring down these formulas, double click, and it's going to bring it down all the way. All right, very good. So we can see how we get the unit base. Now what I want to do is I want to know the last two I want time, period, the tasks based by employee. In other words, I want to know the individual employees here, a list of employees and linked to the employee list. I want to know how much time they've been allotted on task, focus only on time-based task. And this one's for a very specific employee. We're totaling the time allotted. But this time we're basing it on a specific employee, of course, also within the date range. Total actual spent also for this employee and the completion percentage here and the completion. Okay, so that's it. So then I just bring those down for the individual employees and we're gonna bring down all the employees. Okay, so that's time-based, but what about, again, unit-based, right? For those employees who are doing units, again, we want to do something, but this one's gonna be unit-based and based on the employee. So we've got a list of employees and bringing down the data. Okay, so now that we understand how we acquired all of the data, what I would like to do is I would like to create some charts and graphs for this data. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the first I'd like to just basically highlight this data here, however we have it, and I'm going to insert, and we're gonna click on here, and I'd like a donut chart for this, and that seems nice. Now I want a dynamic total on this. So instead of quantity, I'm just gonna put equals tasks by quantity, okay? So that's fine. And I'd like to bring this up here. So I wanna bring this all the way up here. So we have that. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a color that we would like. We're gonna go with a theme color. So I'm gonna give it the color and I'll be using this blue theme here. I think that's sufficient. Okay, so task quantity by, so that's kind of what I want, but I would like to also place some legend in there. So we're gonna add legend in there. So actually we've got the legend, so just some data labels and I'm gonna make them white. So we'll, we'll cover the format in just a bit. I think that's kind of what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control X here and then I'm gonna go into the main and then I'm gonna control V. Okay, so that's gonna paste it in here. Okay, very nice. So I'm gonna place it about up here. And then what I like to do is add some format. So I'm gonna drop this down so we can see it because we'll be using the format. And this shape fill will be using no fill on this and then no outline on this. Okay, like I said, that legend, I would like to have those in white. So the font will do a white font here and then also make it a little bit bold so we can see it. Now we're gonna be working with this and I don't wanna borders around it. So we're gonna use control one and it's gonna bring out this format here and I'm gonna float this over here so we can get a little bit closer. Now inside this, I don't want any borders on that. So I'm gonna say no line on that. We don't need any borders. And also I'm going to give it, the fill is fine, but what I'd like to do is get, work with it. I wanna add a little bit of a shadow on here. It's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna drop it down to two points and two points on that. I would like a eh, soft edge, maybe not necessary, but I would like a 3D format on here so it pops a little bit. So I'm gonna give it a 3D bevel. Okay, that looks good. And I also want to make the donut hole size a little bit small, uh, bigger so we can see the text. Okay, good, I like that. I'm gonna increase this to 10 font and I'm gonna set this a color. So I'm gonna increase this, I'm gonna give it this our theme color, which is this one right here and then we can make that bold i think and that looks pretty good also the same thing here again bold here okay tasks by status i like that that looks really good and what we want to do is i want to shrink this up a little bit because i don't need this big and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring it up here like this and i want to make sure that we have enough space so that our legend does show okay we can also use it i think that's okay that looks pretty good like just like that all right very good 
Okay, very good. So now what I'd like to do is I want to add some information inside here. So I'm going to enter a text box here. So shapes, text box directly inside here. And this is going to be the total task. So I'm going to put total tasks. And then we'll enlarge that a little bit. I want it a little bit bigger so that we can fit in that. So I'll make this a little bit bigger here. And we'll go inside here and make this a bit bigger. I want to show it. I'm going to center that here and center it in night here and then we'll give it a color and bold it and then just increase here okay not too big all right so total task we've got that here now what i want to do is i want to insert one more for the total task so again insert shape we're going to text box and in fact let me escape out of there i want to select this first so that it moves together so i select that again once again shapes insert text box and this way they're going to move together equals i want this linked to the total tasks that we have set right inside our dashboard data right here total tasks 84. okay i'm going to center that here give it the font and increase that centering that okay so now we see total tasks perfect is 84. okay i like that that looks pretty good and that's so what i meant is when they move together see how it moves together that's what i wanted to make sure of okay i can drop this down i want to make this a little bit bigger here just so we can see it and that's pretty good one i'm going to try to go for one font size bigger so 16 but let's do 15 15 should be sufficient perfect 15 is the font and then we can go 84 drop that down okay so that looks nice so i can see the total tasks and everything and now what i'd like to do is i want to add a little bit of a background to this as you saw in the sample so i'm going to insert a shape here i'm going to use a rounded corner here and this of course is going to go in the background but it's going to be somewhere about right up like this okay so now i'm going to give it a white fill or probably maybe just uh i'll do a white fill and I'll do no outline and I want to make sure there's a shadow on it and then I'm going to move it to the back so we're going to go shape effects shadow and we'll just give it a little bit of a shadow and then I also want to set the transparency to probably about 50 percent something like about like that and then we're going to move it to the back so send to the back okay so now we've got a nice quite little background that we have set on that okay so that looks good i like that because i want to enter one more this time a pie chart okay so we're going to save our work and now we're going to go back into the dashboard data and now i want to create a pie chart based on that so we can just select just the data that we have for now is fine inserting uh, this time we're going to click just a pie chart okay again once we're going to do we're going to set that up just as we did we want a dynamic title on that so we're going to equals task by type okay that's task by type. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna place the legend this time. The legend here probably not because it takes up a lot of room. So I'll just add some data labels onto that and set the category labels. So again, we're gonna set the data labels here, and I'll use the inside out. Let's do inside out is good. That looks good. And then what do I want to happen? I want to display that. So I'm gonna go to the more options, and we're going to go into the label options because I want to see the label options here, and I want to display here the categories here so that's exactly what i want right so we want to give it a color so i don't need the legend in this case that's unnecessary i can delete that and that's going to increase the space here giving it the color the same color of our theme here okay that looks pretty good task by type and we'll customize the rest on the other sheet but that's kind of the right idea so again taking this control x here and then going back into the main here selecting something else and then we can do this control v okay so that's going to put it now i'm going to put it right about here of course we're going to shrink it up here so we want it to to display it so i'm going to shrink it up a little bit here and also we're going to make sure to bring this up here i like the way that looks giving it the color that we want making sure it's bold the same as the others again doing the same thing increasing the font blue and maybe bold on these would be sufficient okay also the same we're going to do here i want just as we did before we want no lines here i want uh, inside there, I'm going to set a shadow on that, a slight shadow, two points on this and two points on this, a 3D format on that. I do want to bevel on that just as we did before. So I want everything to match the theme. Again, on the overall image, right, we don't want any, no fill here. So we're going to shape and then no fill on that and no outline on that. Okay, so let's take a look at that. That's looking pretty good. I like the way that that looks. It's got a nice completed look they blend together we can move this one over a little bit but it's pretty good just the way it is bringing it over all right great so we've got task by type we've got quantity by type these things look lined up all right what do we want next so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this shape i want to actually i want to grab the shape behind it so i'm going to move this out a little bit and i want this shape 
not this one this one here and i want to duplicate that Control d to duplicate it i'm going to bring it down here and then we can move this one back to where it belongs okay so now what else do we have to do well i would like some time-based tasks here so what i want to do is i want to make sure that we maximize this space here so i want to do that making sure that we're maximized and i've got two longer ones here so let's space things out accordingly i'm going to use Control d and I'm going to take these, I want two equal parts. So I'm going to bring these down a little bit like this. So I want two different graphs about here and here. So that looks good like that and like that. So we're going to put two graphs in here. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to put two graphs in here and I want them about equal. So, and I want to cover my, my space. So I'm going to do control D again and whoops, let's bring that up here. Not that one. Okay, so this one and then control C will do control V. This is what I want. So basically, I'm gonna go all the way to about here. I'm not like that. I wanna bring this to make sure that it extends all the way. Oops, that's too far, but about right there. So when I shrink it back in, I wanna make sure that the screen covers all the screen. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold the control down and bring make these a little bit smaller so that they're equal distance and coming here. And then we're going to go here. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to make these vertical. So basically, this is where we're going to place things on. And I'm going to bring the round the corners down where they belong. Move this one. Okay, so that looks good. So we, now we've got a place for each one of our graphs that we're going to place. Now it's just simply a matter of placing them and building them in here because I like the way that that looks really good. Okay. All right, very good. We can shrink this one up a little bit because it's a little bit too bigger than the other one. Okay, that looks good. They're both about equal now. All right, continue on. So what do I want to put in here? Well, let's take a look at the dashboard data and see what we've got next. We've got time-based tasks. So that's what we're going to do. Time-based tasks. We're going to insert. Maybe we'll look at the recommended charts. We see that we've got a clustered column. Well, that's look really nice. That would be nice. I'd like to have that. So we're going to click OK on that. All right, very good. So we're going to set the chart title equal to that dynamic time-based tax here. Okay, very good. Now what all we want to do is it looks pretty good just the way it is. I don't need to change too much on this other than the color theme, which we want to change to that color theme that we've been using. And I like the way that that looks. It's got hours. We've got time allotted. Everything looks pretty good. We can then, again, do control X, then go back to the main and inside here, control V. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to shrink it up because I don't, we don't have that much space on here. Bring it over here a little bit and bring it over here a little bit. Okay, very good. I like the way that that's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is then focus on the format. That shape fills is going to go to nothing. The shape border we don't need on that. So that's going to be close to what our theme is. We want to update, of course, all the font colors to make it look. We're going to drop this down here so we can see everything a little bit quicker. And we can change the text fill to here, that colors. Bring it up. I'm going to bring it up to 10. And then the time base, we're going to then bold this just the way and set the color there. The same thing. So all the, the uh, font is going to go to the colors that we're choosing, which is our theme color. And also we can increase the font on some of those to nine if we've got the space here. This one, I'd also like to increase the font. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I like the way that that looks. We do want to make some updates on this. I'm going to increase this. I want to see those charts as much as possible. And bring this down so we can look okay so a little bit bigger not everything's it's not too cramped it's just the way it looks really good okay so now what else do we want we want to make sure that we've used the theme that we have so again i'm going to say no line on that we don't need any line on this one and we don't need any line on this one i want to make sure that we've created a shadow just as we have before which is going to be that two point blur and the two point distance here we're going to give it that 3d format as we have before and we are also going to make sure we're going to do that with the other one here. Same thing here as we've done before. No line here. We're going to give it that 3D format here. We're going to give it the shadow that we want, that two-point shadow with the two-point blur and the two-point distance here. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to do something similar. I'm just going to create a little bit of a, a glow here with this one because I want it to stand out a little bit like that that's a little bit too much so we can drop down the glow here a little bit like that that looks good and the transparency is fine as it is okay that looks really nice i like the way that that's looking it's it's clear it's nice and it's within our theme we can bring it up here to make sure that we've covered all it okay very good so i like the time-based task that looks pretty good now i want to add one more okay going back inside the dashboard data we also have unit-based tasks so i'm going to highlight here 
And again, I'm going to insert, and I'm going to use the recommended charts, and I'm going to use the same type of cluster here. So we can see this repetition will certainly help us. A chart title is going to be equal to that dynamic title, unit-based tasks. This one will work on that. Let's move that over here. So we can bring it up here in the center, just the way we like it. Here, again, also, we want to do the same thing. So we're pretty much good with that. We're going to just do the rest of the customizing. Go ahead and give it that theme color that we know we've been using all along. Again, Control X here, going back into the main, and then Control V here, pasting that in. Update the formats to no fill, no lines on that one here, and then customizing everything just the way we had it. So let's drop this down again to make sure that we've got everything lined up. The color of the font here, scrolling up here, and we're bringing this up to 10, just as we did before. So also everything is a little bit of repetition here, but that's gonna help us learn quick quicker. Okay, and then we'll, we'll size everything up accordingly to make sure it's right, and we'll position it just to make sure that we have everything. Okay, I like the way that that looks. I don't think we need this one bold. And this one we do want bold. It's consistent with our theme and colors so that everything is good. Okay, again, I like that. We do need to position this accordingly. Obviously, it's too big here, so we want it to fit within our... All right, that looks good. Make sure that we've maximized the size. The only thing I want to do on this is I want to remove those inside lines. We don't need those. And we don't need these here. Okay, that looks good. But I do want to increase as maximum as high as possible on these and drop this down a little bit. That looks good. Again, setting the same theme just as we've done before. No line on that. Going back into the presets, giving it that shadow. Again, two point here. So everything is exactly consistent with the way we've been designing it. Giving it that bevel here, just the way we did here. Same thing with this one here. We also want to give it that shadow, just as we did before, the two point shadow, consistent and also the 3D format on that bevel. Let's go here. Okay, that's the bevel, that's what I like. And of course, we're gonna give this line the glow just as we did just as we did before. Here, giving it that glow and then dropping it down here a little bit. We don't need that much of a glow. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's equal distance. I wanna double check the glow on this one to make sure that, that we are consistent. We see that this has got a two point and 60%. So that's what I wanna match here a two point and 60% on the glow. Perfect. That's just the way we like it. Everything's looking really good here. We've got unit based tasks. We see where we're going on that and the completion percentage. Very good. Okay, we got two more to go. Then we are going to be complete. What are they? I have time period tasks by employee. So we're going to go into the dashboard data. And I just want something relatively simple. So I'm just going to select on the employee here and the completion percentage because that's really all I want to show. I'm going to insert going to go into the let's do a 2d bar chart and that should be sufficient because i want it and what this one's going to be long so instead of completion i'm going to set equals i'm going to use that time period tasks by employee and that's what i want to show okay so everything else is in here i think we're already on the right theme i just want to make sure it looks the same okay continuing on again control x and then going back into the main here and then control v Okay, so now let's let's size this up accordingly. So we're going to bring it down, make sure it's within our panel, just as we want here. And then what we can do is now what we're going to do is re remove that, that shape fill, that shape border. That looks pretty good. Again, changing it. I'm going to drop this down so that we can start to format it accordingly. That text, using the text, let's do this text fill. Uh, this color here is our standard color that we've been using, making it bold so that they're all the same here. I want to remove those interior grid lines. I really don't need those. And okay, that looks pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, we could probably go one font bigger on the uh, employee names and we'll do one font bigger on that. Okay, everything is looking good. Everything got colored up accordingly. Now we're going to change the bars to make sure that they're consistent with our theme. No line on that, no border on that. The fill will be automatic. The shadow will be standard as we've been doing this here and then bring it down here i want the 3d format to be the same as what we've been doing and that looks good this one i'm going to change up just a little bit why don't we do a gradient fill on that i'm going to do a dark to light on here and we'll do let's say dark to light it's off the screen here i'm going to bring this over i want you to be able to see this i'm going to do a dark to light i'm going to do dark to light here on that one that looks kind of nice a little bit different so it gives it that dark to light i like that everything looks pretty good here it's kind of pretty straightforward here on this one okay very good one last one saving our work we have not been doing that frequently enough going back to the dashboard data 
here. And then what I'm gonna do again, this time unit period task by employee. So I'm gonna hold down the control. I really only wanna focus on the completion percentage and the employees. We're going to insert, again, just as we've done before, 2D bar chart. Double checking here, setting the title as dynamic based on a specific cell. You see how we do the same thing, very, very similar. And then in the enter, okay, that looks good. Again, I wanna check the theme here, making sure that we're on the right color. Good, good, see things move faster. Control X, back in here to the main, Control V here. We're gonna paste it in, let's do that one more time just to make sure it went in the right spot. Control V here, there it is, that's where I want it. And then we'll size and position it accordingly. Inside here, we need it inside this panel here. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna group everything together because that's gonna be really important. I wanna make sure that here. Okay, going down to the format, no fill, no border here. Making sure we'll set all the colors. We can do all that text fill to the same. Making sure they're all, we can do it as a whole. That's pretty good. Then individually, I want to bold it here. And then we can bring these up to 10, font size 10, both here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, removing those internal grid lines. We don't want them, making sure consistent. Going back here, this time we'll, we'll format from this side. I want, again, no line here. We'll do the gradient fill here. Oops, not all, I want all of them, not one of them. Let's select out and select back in here. And then doing the gradient fill, not the background. That's not what I want. Oop, okay, continuing, there we go. That's what I want, the gradient here. This is the one I want, that gradient. That's, remember it, that's what we want. Going back inside our shadow, adding a shadow here, two points on that, two points on that. Going back to the, here, the bevel. Okay, that looks really good. I like the way that that's looking. Here, looking pretty consistent and good both ways around. Okay, let's just take a quick look. I'm gonna close it up. I'm gonna check for size, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna group it. I wanna make sure that they're, they're equal distance all the way around, making sure that they're, they're looking consistent. I wanna have the consistent look for both of them. And that looks pretty good here. All right, very, very cool. We can bring this a little bit over here. That looks pretty, pretty good. So now what we wanna do is, I, don't, I wanna make sure that everything is grouped together. So to do that, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here and I'm gonna use my selection tool and I'm gonna go over everything here and I want all those shapes in a single group, grouping them all together. And if you remember correctly, what's the most important thing after we group them? We need to make sure that we are sizing but not moving, okay? So we're gonna go into the properties here move but don't size with cells that's very important for that group we need to give this a name because we only want this group to show up when we select the dashboard it's called dashboard group now inside the code we can set that back to uh 100 here okay so that's looking really good we can close this out i like that it's looking nice together and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and code and we have a dashboard refresh we want the let's close this one out that's the sample main screen macros remember we didn't have this shape now we do we just created it dashboard group and we also have this one right here shapes dashboard group we can comment that out that's the that's what's going to show or hide it so if i select on here that looks pretty good that dashboard automatically project tasks here going back into the dashboard group, looking really good. So we see that it appears, we can unselect something. Employees, wow, this looks really, really good. We created a really incredible productivity tracker, complete with full scale dashboard. If we wanna check to see if we want dynamic, last month, not too much data going on there, but we can see that, shows a little bit. This month shows a little bit, so the uh, automatically will show based on that. We can set the dates here. It's gonna be based on a date change. If we wanna change the dates here, we can. I'm gonna increase this column a little bit here. And that looks pretty good. I really like that. And then if we change this to this month, it's, I didn't really show you, I wanna show you one more thing. When I make a change to this, notice how this becomes automatically the month. Let's do that. That's on the change event. And that's called the dashboard, right? It's gonna change. So let's go and look in the dashboard macros. One macro that I wanna show you, date range change. This event happens when there's a change to H3. If I take a look inside the main and I see a change event, a change event right up here to H3, we're gonna run the dashboard change rate and then we're gonna refresh the dashboard. Probably don't need to do that because if we change the dates, it's automatically going to happen automatically. So we can probably comment that out. But 
I'll just keep it there for now just to ensure. But so we're changing this when H3 changes. Now, when we make that change, all we need to do is determine the row. I'm going to look in H3. I want to determine, I'm going to look in the date range. I want to determine the row. What does that mean? That means this named range right here called date range. I want to know the row. If it's this year, it's eight. If it's this last month, it's, it's eight. If it's this month, it's seven. Once I know the row, I can extract both the from and the two dates, and I can place them directly inside both J3 and L3 respectively. Okay, so to do that, we need to extract that row. We're gonna get that inside that, we're gonna use the find, we're looking for it, and we're gonna extract the row. If it's found, meaning it's not zero, oh, excuse me, if it is zero, we're gonna let the user know to please correct. If, and we're gonna exit the sub. If it is found, all we're gonna do is we're gonna set BA to true, and this helps us automatically set, so that, that means when I make a change to here, the dashboard is going to refresh. When I make a change here, the dashboard is going to refresh. But what about if I make a change to both of these? I don't want the dashboard to refresh two different times. So having this set up automatically, having this go to true and then back to false ensures that if B8 is false, I'm going to check one more thing. B8 must be false. Dashboard main here on H3 and one more. <laughs> and, and range b8 is false b8 equals dot value this just helps the macro not run multiple times in the same right so that's it so when b8 remember b8 is a dashboard change i hit it right it's a hidden let's unhide it just so we can see i want to ensure that it's okay so we see that b8 is false so that means if i make a change to to here this is going to go to true and we won't refresh the schedule when both of these are changed at the same time so that's all we're doing there to make to ensure that okay we can hide this again and now what we can do is we can go back into that vba so we're going to ensure that that happens when ba is false okay and so that ensures that it only does once when we make a change it's going to be a little bit quicker and it's automatically going to change once okay i like that last month perfect okay so that's looking really good and then this month yeah, that's faster. Okay, so continuing on with that, we want to make sure that we, once we have that row, let's put the dashboard here. Once we have that row, I can then take inside J3, which is our from date, and put whatever's in G and the range row from the admin. Admin here, G and the range row, whatever date this is. The next one, H and the range row, H and the range row is going to go into l3 so that is going to be our two date so we have that covered and then we're just going to set that back to false right so it's automatically going to refresh automatically so date change how does that refresh it refreshes when i make h when i change h3 so inside mate so first we run the macro date range then we refresh the dashboard perfect that's it all right very very cool in this incredible training thanks for sticking with us for long i hope you have improved we created a really incredible dynamic dashboard based on tasks employees task types and a whole bunch of great data project tasks we were able to create brand new tasks save update delete create recurring tasks automatically create a task list based on a dynamic search term and we can create any search term based on a list we also had an incredible scheduler this is an incredible training where we created a really really cool task scheduler on a daily view based on all the employees and dynamic tasks with pictures and a list of employees i don't really know what we're supposed to do with this it just looks nice all right if you do like this training please please support it. i've got incredible courses if you want to learn how to create your own excel based applications and sell them whether it's for passive income or create your own little business i've got an incredible 132 hour mentorship course that can help you do that and i've created that and also created an incredible accounting application within that course i'm going to include the link down below that's the mentorship course that will help you achieve your dreams by creating and selling your own excel-based applications thank you so much for your continued support and we'll see you next week